morning. Welcome to the September 8th, 2022 meeting of the Code Enforcement Board. Meeting will now come to order. May we have a roll call, Madam Secretary? Here. Ms. Marsh? Here. Ms. Roby? Here. Ms. Himes? Here. Mr. Gonzalez? Not here. Ms. Ouija? Here. And Mr. Reinhardt's not here. Okay, motion to excuse Mr. Reinhardt and Mr. Gonzalez. So, second. Mo motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. We do have a quorum. Um, okay, everybody had a chance to read the minutes. Do you have any additions or corrections? No, no. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to, I, there was one that I want, I think. Are we missing any minutes, previous minutes? I don't know whether we got, there's, was there's, it July or June? July, there is one missing. There's one missing July, okay. Uh, let me see something. All right, if I look at case <clears throat> 22, uh, is that on the new agenda or the old? The old, the old agenda, case 22, they're the same. Uh, that was a new case last month, and it's now listed under old cases. But it wasn't heard as a new case because there was some problem with notification. And I think there's another one like that, too. But I, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Actually, yeah. that, that case is now in compliance as of 9-2-22. Oh, all right. That's well, that's good. Oh. Yeah, case 22 is in compliance. All right, and there was one other one that was just like the case wasn't heard. Case 25. Um, yeah, yeah, Madam Chair, can... The secretary do the announcements first. That might take care of some of your. That, those are the only two questions I have. Um, what about case 25? That was the same thing as case 22, where we didn't hear the case, and it was a new case, and now it's listed under old cases. That's CEB 0822-181. Just to hear it when I move them around. Yeah. That's what I figured. Okay. So we need to hear that. That'll be heard. At, I just want to make sure everybody knows that'll be heard as a new case. Yes, okay, good. Thank, Thank you. you. That's case 25. Okay. All right. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Uh, motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Does anyone need to disclose any ex parte communication? Okay. Are there any announcements? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Page three. Case number two. CEB 0822-178. 563 foot court. Is now in compliance as of 9 6 22. Case number three, CEB 08 22 168, 815 Vernon Street via Zoom. Page number four, case number eight. CEB 0722162-1505 Crescent Ridge Road compliance. What, what case is that? I'm sorry. Case number eight. Page four. Page four. Page four. Okay, got it. Okay. I'm sorry. Again, sorry. It's okay. Case number eight, CEB 0722162-1505 Crescent Ridge Road is in compliance as of eight. I'm sorry, 9822. Page 5, case number 12, CEB 0822185, 744 Mercedes Avenue is in compliance as of 9622. 
Case number 13, same page. CEB 0822-186-1305 Idlewild Drive is in compliance as of 831-22. Page six, case number 15, CEB 0622-145 is in compliance as of 831-22. Page number eight. Again, case number 22, CEB 0822-180. 116 South Keach Street is in compliance as of 9-2-22. Case number 23, CEB 012239, 528 South Carolina Street, via Zoom. Page number 10. Case number 30, CEB 922207, 810 Edward Street is in compliance as of 830-22. Page number 11. Case 32, CEB 09-2204. I'm sorry, what case number was that? 35. Okay. It's Zoom, via Zoom. Still on page 11, case number 37, CEB 09-22-214, 506 South Seneca Boulevard is in compliance as of 9-7-22. Page number 12, case number 39, CEB 09-22-217, 745 Greenway Place is in compliance as of 9-7-22. And those are my announcements. Good. Thank you very much. It's You're wonderful ready. to have so many in compliance. That's what we're looking for is in compliance. Okay. Uh, Let's see, where are we now? So, uh, would the code officers please stand up and be sworn in? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you. All right, here's our procedure, everybody. We'll be calling cases by number and for the most part in order as they are listed on the agenda. If there are any attorneys in the room that need to be in court, we'll hear those cases first. If there are any police officers that need to get back on duty, we'll hear those cases in the beginning as well. Uh, when your case is called, please come forward and be sworn in. State your name and address for the record. Um, if you're not the owner of the property, please make sure you tell us how you're related to the owner of the property and if you have permission to speak for them. Our proceedings are recorded, so please speak into the mic. Direct all of your responses to the board. Some, uh, you may have witnesses testify in some cases. Uh, we, we allow that. Yeah. If this goes longer than 11 o'clock, we'll take a break at 11 o'clock. So that, that's, <clears throat> that we're gonna start with the lien review. It's lien review number one. CEB 09-20-174. Respondents here? <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. 
who's going to represent the city here? Okay. Excuse me. Okay, if could you, can you go move over, over just both of you share that mic, that would be great. No, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, come here. No, you want over here. Okay, you're good. Good morning, Mr. Jones. Good morning, Mark Jones, Neighborhood Services. Uh, my credentials are in file with the city. Your name, this sir? being a lien reduction, typically uh, they will explain their situation first. Okay. I just need to know their names. Look, we need to get them sworn in. Yes, sir. Your names, please? Joseph Malecki. Okay. And your name, sir? Ethan Malecki. Are you a son? Grandson. Grandson. Will you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Who would uh, like to speak? Madam Chair, we have met with uh, both the individuals previously and did uh, discuss a lien reduction. Mm -hmm. um, the city is uh, favorable to reduce the lien to $4,000. Uh, of course, uh, you want to, any discussion you wish right. to have with the uh, folks here. Right. Okay. The lien was... 20,000 and you, the city uh, did you come to an agreement yes okay came to me what, what would you like to tell us about um, anything I think that there was um, just a bunch of miscommunication I mean starting from the beginning you know the property next door got condemned we were not warned of them tearing down the building we just went there one morning to work and the uh, the building was getting demolished, and we shared a wall with that building. Could I ask a question. I have, I have a question written down about that. What do you mean you shared a wall? So, I, I don't know. It's been like I that. mean, whose wall is it? It if, doesn't it belong to one person or one property? If yeah, then it would be the building next door. So it belonged to them. Right. Okay. Did they knock it down? Yes. Okay. So it left us exposed. Right. So we had some shipping containers in the back we just put up as a barrier for temporary just to make sure nobody would come in and steal um, our property. Uh -huh. And then I had reached out to AAA Fence early in December to see if we could get a chain link fence put up, but I know that's not allowed anymore. But anyways, the response from the city was a four-foot fence or wall. And... Um, that just kind of went on back and forth as to why we were only allowed to put a four foot fence up because that wouldn't do us any good. That went on for a few months. And anyways, I had gotten a triple A fence. So they were waiting to hear back from the city. And um, I guess the reasoning was because there's a warehouse in the back and then the front, you're not supposed to put anything more than a four foot barrier in the front of your property. And I just think nobody had went out there and looked at the situation because we have eight foot block walls on the other sides. And so then COVID came, that pushed us back. And then um, from, I mean, long story short, we just were trying to find a contractor and everything. And I think the contractor even went to maybe um, one of the meetings for on our behalf to try and see why it was only a four foot wall and then they and what was the explanation do you recall <clears throat> why it was a four foot yeah because the there's a building in the back and like you know how in a home you're not supposed to put a a six foot fence all the way around your property i think that's what their reasoning was it all i know is we were told nothing can exceed four feet in the front and um, I unfortunately didn't do things through email. I did it through phone calls and meetings or just going down to the permitting area. So I think it just, you know, I don't know. But eventually we came to the agreement of a block wall, which would have been really expensive because we would have had to redo the footer, a wood fence or a vinyl fence. And once I got the contractor involved, he was able to, I don't know what he did on his end to get the, eight foot fence but now there's an eight foot wood fence there and i just think it took a little bit longer than needed you know yeah, okay but i i'm really 
is this commercial for zone commercial? And yeah. so they yeah. would they be allowed? I guess this is for the city. Would they be allowed something higher than four feet? They ended up getting permission from the city okay. to put up the fence. It was a very long, but it took a long time, a long to get process, that permission. Uh, yeah. and they did diligently pursue it. Okay, that's why the city is um, okay agreeable. Yeah, they got a variance, or who who gave them permission? Permit. I'm not sure whether they got a variance or not. They did get a building permit to do it, and it was approved and finaled. So I'm not sure what the well, process. Well, it could have been permits and licensing that yeah, did it. Yeah, they could have reviewed well, it through because zoning. it's allowable in a commercial zone. I mean, this wasn't a residential zone. So they're telling them all this time that they can't do it, and it is allowable. Correct. And okay. I, I guess I wasn't allowed to pull the permit as a, you know, I had to get a right. contractor to Correct. do this for me. How high was the commercial fence that was torn down? It wasn't a fence. It was a, a wall next door. It was probably a 20-foot building, okay. maybe less, maybe 16. So it was, there was no fence back there? Okay. No, there was nothing there to begin with. So we didn't alter anything. It's just when that building next door got knocked down, we were just exposed, <clears> and then <throat> we got a, a letter, okay. and we kind of weren't expecting that much of an expense, you know. Okay, so are there any comments from the board, questions, comments? My only comment is how do we stop this kind of miscommunication? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either you can do something or you can't do something, and it shouldn't be changing from. Well, well Madam Chair, if I may. Go ahead. Um, Anthony Jackson, attorney for the city. Uh, one of the things we just need to remember with a um, lien review is that we're really not re hearing the facts of the case. So, I mean, we, we're hearing them to the best of what we're able to present at this right. time. But we actually already heard the case, and those issues. Uh, if there are additional issues, they may have been overlooked, but we could have talked about them then, and putting us in a position now to try and answer those may not be the most fair position for us to be in. For the city happened. to be in. Yeah, the okay. city to be in on what happened. But we're allowed to consider that. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And, uh, but but I recognize as well that okay. it did take several months, and on the date of the um, uh, when the fine was imposed, the respondent wasn't present, and for whatever reason, <coughs> no, they were not. So uh, we waited for, I mean, y'all allowed them the time, and it did not occur. I think the parties have met, and, and I think they kind of have a joint understanding. But obviously, as we, as we said before, it's a right. uh, board determination. So, so it is a fact that we have made these uh, uh, discussions. It would be nice if it was passed on to the permits Certainly. Yeah. in writing. Well, would anybody like uh, to make a motion? I, I'd like, I mean, my feeling is that I would reduce it even further to like 2,500. Make a motion. I, can I make a it's motion, Mr. Chair? Mr. Carroll. Yes, Carroll. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to reduce the amount of the lien to $2,500 subject to being paid within 30 days or the fine will revert to the original amount. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you'll be getting me. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to hear our, what's called our old cases, cases we've heard before that have been found in noncompliance. Um, so we'll call case number one, CEB zero. Excuse me, Madam two. Chair. Did you give them an amount of time? I didn't hear you give them how much time they had to pay that. Yes. Yeah. Three days. 30 days. Three days. I, I think I said that. She did. Yes. My apologies. It's okay. No problem. Um, so case number one, CEB 02-21-44, Keith Thomas. Mr. Thomas here. Oh, geez. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, there. how you doing? Oh, oh, I'm doing boys. fine. I'm doing fine. Here we go. Oh, shit. 
Why y'all show up my house looking like that? <laughs> Can y'all show something else? Okay, let's uh, let's hear from Miss Kirk. Okay, uh, good morning, Sarah Kirk, Inspector with the City. My credentials are on file. Uh, this case is uh, returning before you, uh, Mr. Uh, Keith is Mr. Keith Thomas. He is on the city's waiting list uh, for a new roof, which it turns out it's going to be a complete rebuild. Uh, so staff is requesting to amend to the January cutoff for compliance. Um, excuse me, but Mr. Thomas wasn't sworn in. Yeah, I got to get. I'm sorry. In. I'm just, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Please be sworn in. State your name, sir. Keith Thomas. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All of it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I think we can take the re report of the code uh, officer and right. just uh, agree with their I, I I agree. We'll move on right make away. a motion. I don't have the date for the January meeting. What is the date? Does anybody know? I, I stopped. 12-8. That's the December meeting date. Yeah, that's December. We need the January one. I think it was in the packet, Luigi. Hmm? I think no, it's in I the packet. It, it might be. I just don't January have 12th. A, January, January 12th. January 12th. Me, what, what's the cutoff for that? Does anybody know? Be what, a week before? It would be the Wednesday prior. Wednesday prior would be the 4th. Okay. Okay, so one four. Ooh. Okay, uh, just so you know, Mr. Thomas, they're giving you till January again. Everything's all, you know, all set up and yes, hope you get your house fixed. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Nice to see you again. And saying to y'all. Okay. A motion? So, so move. Motion to approve. Oh, all right, Ms. Himes made a motion to, uh, to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow the respondent until January 4th to come into compliance. So they ain't gonna be finished with it by January. That's okay, we'll okay. just keep up on it and see how it's going. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, to be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of five up to $1,000 per day. And a second from Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. And Madam Chair, that, that date was January the as far as I know, the the cutoff date is January the fourth. I don't have it's that. I don't have the calendar, so we'll fix that. January yeah. fourth, Wednesday before. Okay, but that's what it should be. Twelve <laughs> Thursday. Okay. Uh, January fourth or official January cutoff. That's all. You right, know. the official January cutoff right. date. Right. How's that? Okay. All right, thank you very much. And thank y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Y'all is a great committed board. I love y'all. Y'all just keep doing what you're doing. God bless y'all. You too. Same Take to care. you, Miss Ouija. Bye. All right, now. <laughs> yeah. All right, case number two is in compliance. Case number three, CEB 08-22-168. Is a Zoom call? Do we have a Zoom person on Zoom here? Okay. Get my papers confused here. Hello. Thank you, my lady. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. All right. Now this. Uh, uh. This is, I want to read this over again so you make sure that you hear this case number three, CEB 08-22-168.
Carol Marie Catool. Who would you? Who are you? That person? Yes. Okay. Would you state your name and address for the record and be sworn in, please? Eight fifteen Belen Street, Detroit Beach. I can't. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude, but I can't understand you. Eight fifteen Belen Street, Detroit Beach. She didn't give her name. Would, she's given the address, 815 Vernon Street. 815 Vernon Street is your address. State your name, please. Mary Cato. Yeah. Mary I'm, I'm concerned. Is, is the person that's with you, can they talk for you? Would you give them authorization? Is there somebody with you? Yeah, no. <clears throat> no. I don't think we should. We're able Hello. To okay, just wait a second. Hello. Madam well, Chair. Well, just wait one second. We'll be right back with you. Yeah. Okay. She's previously attended, is the best recollection from the, uh, um, I don't know if it was, yeah, it would have been to this meeting. She previously attended the best recollection from uh, the supervisor, uh, Mr. Sykes, and she appeared at that time to be in good health. This is something that appears to be a different circumstance. We don't know if she's sick or, or just tired, but we no. probably would prefer that we not proceed. Yeah. Uh, until she feels better. Until we know a little bit better about her, whatever her situation okay. in terms of. Want to continue the case next month? All right. We're willing to continue, Ms. Ms. We're willing to continue on it. Ms. Cattell, we're going to. Um, uh, we want you to be feeling better before we hear this case. Okay. okay. So we're going to postpone it or, you know, uh, continue it until next month. Okay. So we can me. find out. And if there's someone that <clears throat> next time that maybe could, if you're, if you aren't better, if there's someone that could, you know, speak for you or help you, you know, make sure that you have help there. Do you have help there? No. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So we'll just continue this case. Thank you for calling in, though. We'll continue it and hope that you feel better next month. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We need a motion to amend the previous order of non. Well, do we want to do that? Until next month. Mm -hmm. You want to amend we were, or you Yeah, want we were going to ask to amend to the next cutoff anyways. Okay. Yeah, so All right. Um, so. All right. Chair Lynch, a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 10-5 uh, to come in to compliance. We return to a subsequent meeting of the board um, face fine of $1,000 a day. Such a motion? So yeah. moved. Second. Okay. Motion Ms. Heim, second Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Okay. Uh, all right. Case number four, CEB 08-22-167. Daniel Langton. Yes. Okay. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, state both of you going to talk? Yes. Okay, so state your names and address for the uh, record and be sworn. Daniel in. Langton, 428 Pelican Ave, uh, Daytona Beach. Marianne? Okay. Sorry. I'm Marianne Wilson. My address is 428 Pelican Avenue okay. in Daytona Beach. Okay, you were also. both here last time, too, so be sworn in, please. Will you raise your right hand, please? Please tell me, swear to or affirm that the testimony about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. We do. Thank you. I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll hear from Mr. Jones, and then we'll give you a chance to okay. talk. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this case opened back in April of 22 as a citizen's complaint for work without permits. Where we are today, the status is the permit uh, for the uh, fence was issued on May 5th. As of yesterday, it hasn't been finaled yet. They also have a permit for enclosing the carport, uh, closing in window openings, installing new windows and sliding doors. That permit was issued on August 11th, 2022 and hasn't been finaled yet. Uh, they still uh, have not submitted for a permit for the bathroom remodel. 
staff is recommending to amend to the next cutoff, give them time to uh, get these permits finaled. Have they requested to have them finaled? There was no note in the tracket stating that they had a permit in, uh, inspection date scheduled. Typically that shows up in tracket, but as of yesterday, uh, there was not anything located there. So they I'm, okay. They did get the final on their air conditioning. That was one of the other issues that has been finaled. Okay. All right. Um, you have asked to be finaled on these other things. Yes. Yes, we have. Okay. Wait. Uh, we, any, um, go ahead. What, you know, um, it's so what is, what is the date on this, too? What, what Next other, month. Date, next yeah. month. We just, we just want it to be known that we have tried, tried to cooperate. Okay. And sometimes... Well, and you come, and that's really important. Yes. It yeah. is. So we can see that and, you're here. And there have been... I just... <clears throat> I'm not trying to open up a can of worms. However, I've been served a can of worms in communication. So I, I want it to be known that we're trying to cooperate with the city Good. in every way. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, though, to... Um, it, when you're calling in, uh, we haven't been able to email because we've just moved in to the property, uh, not long enough to have everything set up. So sometimes when we're trying to do telephone communication, it has been difficult. Okay. okay. But we've had um, cooperation from the building department to make inspections. Uh -huh. I really don't understand where the communication gap is on the fence issue because when we put the fence we thought that that had already been looked at so when I leave here today I'll go downstairs and get and request a copy of the notes and comments and see if we can't clear that up but we put the fence up because we did have uh, we have a very very rotten next door neighbor okay. that likes to bully us through uh, code enforcement. And we had to put the fence up, basically, that gate fence area to keep him out of coming around our property and taking things and so on and so forth. So we, we have in no way intentionally tried to violate the city, but it's making us look much, much differently than what we are, and we, we really do resent uh, what, that. Um, you're working to get it done. We appreciate that, and we're giving you more time to get it done. And we thank you for that. Just stay in touch, please, with uh, Mr. Jones, and make sure that permits and li you have asked permits and licensing to come final the things that need to be filed. I've hired engineers. We have submitted drawings. I've done everything. I've okay. paid. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I get it. But yeah. just, there, we can't do anything about, we can't communicate with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. we understand. You know, um, anybody have any comments from the board? I do. The only comment I have is get as much as you can in writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have my computer. People back. change, and email. obviously there are differences of opinions about how they, things are reviewed. Sure. So if you come here and you say you did it, and there's no record, then okay. it's on you. I appreciate right. that. Thank yes. you. All right, Ms. Himes. Mr. Your, what is your recommendation? I'm recommending we amend to the next cutoff. Okay. That should give them time to get the okay. these permits finaled and get okay. the other permit. Uh, issued and final. Okay. Madam Chair, a motion for the next cutoff. All right. Uh, Ms. Himes has made a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 10 5 to come into compliance to be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 a day. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, <coughs> Case number five, CEB 6 127 Shannon Shore. Hi. 
Good morning. Good morning. State your name and address for the record. Shannon Shore Martin, 1480 North Peninsula Drive, Daytona Beach. So it's Shannon Martin. It's Martin, okay. but it doesn't it's matter. On here okay. Still. We've yeah. It's, that, from, all, all the names are on there now. Yes, so we they got are. so. Okay. Now can you s raise your right hand, please? Oh, we're still doing this. <laughs> yes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony about the provider is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Jones, what can you tell us? Yes. Well, I've been in contact numerous times through uh, email with uh, Ms. Shore. Uh, they do have a permit now. It's going to take a little bit of work to get the uh, wall repaired. Uh, I think we may even have a, if you can close in on that, Joe, where the uh, wall is deteriorating. Um, we'd like to ask to give them to the November cutoff to get this uh, corrected. Just so you know, uh, Mr. Jones, they haven't approved that permit because of the drawing. Okay. They would, even though it says approved in there, they won't actually let me pay for it until I pay someone to draw it out, even though it's just a repair, not a demolish. Okay. The uh, Our system shows the <laughs> permit was... Uh, it does. Was, so um, this is a new information. Now, you did state... No, that's been the information this whole time. So in okay. the system, it will show to you that the permit has been approved with C-O-N-T. So then when I go down there to pay for the permit, they will not give me the permit, even though we're only repairing the cracked area. We're not demolishing anything. We're not rebuilding anything. They are still requiring me to get an engineer because the house neighbor, <coughs> that next door neighbor's house, which we spoke about last time, has a front yard swimming pool that is um, not permitted. But now I'm being told that that's grandfathered in. So now this has became my problem because my wall is deteriorating because of their grandfathered in front yard swimming pool. So now they're requiring me to get an engineer to say if I replace bricks, their grandfathered in unpermitted swimming pool will not be disturbed. So I have been advised to get a lawyer. I haven't done that yet. Um, because it's not my fault that the city of Daytona grandfathered in a front yard swimming pool. No one knows when, no one knows how. You can also see in the picture his wall is cracking. Which would be right here. In his fence, Over to the right, Joe. Our walls, our walls connect. So if I break down a wall or he breaks down a wall, either is going to happen. Um, so you don't know until he engineer does the study whether that repair is even going to right hold. because he also in this four foot wall so where this this um, white fence is and then below that there's a four foot wall where that white pvc fence is underneath there's a, a four foot wall where's the white pvc thing it's behind this behind my palm tree Oh, okay. See I can't see it. Okay. Right okay. Oh, I say. Oh, that's what you're talking yeah. about. The big fence. Yep, right there with the, the one that's in front of my face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. There, there's a four foot concrete fence. Oh, okay. It, no, it also does not have footers. So they put the PVC on top of the four foot concrete. Yeah. Try to make it. It's like eight foot now, almost four foot. But that concrete wall that is potentially, because I'm not an engineer and don't know, but that four foot wall should have had footers from what I'm being told to secure the front yard swimming pool that is unpermitted. So I can have the engineer come out, which he is, says by the end of this week, he could come out and check okay. it out, but he could come out and check it out and say, this is all wrong. Right. And that falls on my neighbor because that wall is technically my wall. But if that wall wasn't there, his swimming pool would have an issue. Madam Chair. It sounds like a complicated case. It to does. Me that's why the one that that, I, I think that's why they want the engine. Right. And out. not not something that I could yes. decipher without help. Yes. That's you why they're on with that neighbor. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Mr. Jones, go ahead. Point. I do, but he's trying to sell and he doesn't want oh he's trying to flip it and sell really quick. So I'm not trying to be that neighbor. Yeah. Um, but also if I'm going to have to come out thousands and thousands of dollars to fix something for an engineer to tell me this was never built properly to begin with, now this falls on me and I've, I've owned the house five years. I'm being told that the reason my bricks are cracking is because someone 
not so smart planted those palm trees right there. So the palm trees, the bulbs are cracking. Who told you that? Um, a concrete person okay. who does concrete. Because palm tree root balls aren't very... No, they aren't. I mean, you yep. can pull it out. Yeah, that's the plan is to pull out the palm trees and just replace the cracking brick, which is in the two corners. You can see where it's already been replaced once. There is a palm tree there, but it was cut flat. So that's the mm -hmm. need for, I think, the, why the city is asking for an engineer. I know. Because there's more complications okay, I, to okay. it. Okay, all right. So, all right. So we've heard what's going on. We can't tell you, yep. advise you mm -hmm. what to do. That, that's it. Yes. So, Mr. Jones, is there anything you'd like, anything more? Um, well, the staff is requesting amending to the right. November cutoff. Okay. Uh, we have researched some of the challenges in regards to the neighboring pool. Uh, all we can no, tell is it's been there since 2006. That's as far back as our records can go. So, um, you know, we want to give uh, the uh, Ms. Shores plenty of time to... Right get whatever needs to be done and yeah, if, cause it sounds she's been keeping me in contact she's good. sent emails so good yeah, just for the engineer to come out alone is six hundred and fifty dollars just for him to come look at it yeah okay mm -hmm. so um, the November right. yes mm -hmm. all right Cheryl entertain motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until 11 2 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to a thousand dollars a day such a motion Motion, Ms. Himes, second. Ms. Roby, all in favor, no, it was Ms. March. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. November what? Second. Second. Thank you. you okay. I will. I'll just keep emailing you. Okay. All right. Case number six, CEB 07 22 165, William Evans. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Were you here last time? Yes. Yes. Okay. State your name and address for the record and be sworn in, please. Cynthia Williams, 328 Alifa Drive, Daytona Beach, Florida. Cynthia spelled with an S. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony about the provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And your affiliation? Um, William Evans is my brother. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, good morning. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, my name is Steve Alderman, Neighborhood Services Inspector for the City of Daytona Beach, and my credentials are on file. Uh, this is for CEB 0722165. Since the last hearing, I've been in contact with Ms. Williams a, a number of times. A permit has been applied for on 81822 and approved on 81922 with State Line Contractors, LLC. Uh, there has been progress this morning as they're starting to remove the brush from around the trees or the, from around the roof edge so that they can access it. And uh, staff requests to amend to the October cutoff to allow for construction and final inspection. Anything you'd like to add? No. Okay. Just Steve and I have been working well together. Good. Pre Excellent. I appreciate it. Keep it up. That's much. good. That's yeah. what we like to hear. Yeah. Okay, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 10 5. Is it 10 5 to come into compliance? Yeah. Or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? So Ms. Roby? Second. Second. Ms. Himes, whatever. Is that right? Okay. Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, thank thank you. you. You too. CEB 06. This is case number 9 22 138. Nicole. Now we got Mar seven. Seven. Oh, seven. Uh oh. Sorry. Number 7. CEB 08-22-177, Michelle Glennie. Okay. Michelle here? No, she's not here. Okay. 
All right. Good morning, Mr. Right. Wiggins. How you doing? Inspector Curtis Wiggins, Code Enforcement, City of Daytona Beach. Credentials on file. Um, since the last hearing, I have had contact with the owner. Uh, more progress was made. Actually, I've spoken with her on yesterday. And so um, instead of imposing the fine, the staff recommend um, a man to next cutoff. Okay. All right, so you're satisfied with the progress. Well, yes. Good. Uh, if you just have that one side at the back end on the west side of the house okay. to complete. So I believe she's going to take care of it. Okay. Chair, I'll entertain any questions. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 10-5 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second. Second. Second, Ms. Marsh. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. All right, case number eight is in compliance. Now we're on case number nine. Uh, CEB 06-22-138, Nicole Marjanowicz. Don't know how you say that, but not, not present. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Stenson. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> I'm Inspector Stenson, uh, Code Enforcement, Qualification on File with the City. Uh, since the last hearing, the owner has visited the office multiple times. Uh, the last one was yesterday. The wall work has been done. We are just waiting for the final inspection. I'd like to amend this case to the October cutoff. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Chair, we'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 10-5 to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. So that's a motion. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. aye. Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Case number 10. CEB 08-22-170, Alice Schneider. Schneider, not here again, okay? Good morning. Good morning, folks, board. This is Inspector Jean-Baptiste. Um, since last hearing, I have had contact with uh, Ms. Snyder. In fact, I spoke to her last Friday. She was out of town. She's in the process of getting everything done. As you can see, the house has already been painted. The only thing that's left is the outside of the, um, of the garage. As such, staff is requesting to amend to the October cutoff, please. Any questions? All right, Chair Ong Jane, motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 10 5 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. So moved. Um, motion, Mr. Harrington. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, like sign opposed. <laughs> motion carries. Thank you. Okay. You have one. Yeah, Case 11, I right? I do. Okay. <laughs> Testing. Case 11 is CEB 07-22-161. Taris Delvati uh, was here last time. You are here this time. <laughs> State your name and address for the record and be sworn in. Taris Salvati, 401 North Oleanda Avenue, Daytona Beach, 32118. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jean-Baptiste, what can you tell us? Once again, Inspector Jean-Baptiste, since last hearing, I've had communications with Ms. Savati. Uh, progress has been observed, um, obvious on the property. However, um, there still remained a matter of the roof that is currently under probate. Staff is requesting to amend to the November cutoff, please. Can I ask a question? Am I responsible for this? That's a question for me. We could talk oh, about that okay. after. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. Yeah, I can't see what you're pointing to, and that we don't answer those. Okay. Are you, but just Mr. Know John, but he can answer that, that for you. Okay. Are you yeah. now the legal owner? You, you said last time it would be cleared up. And yes, I finally got it cleared up. I'm waiting. I'm trying to sell the house as well. 
So I've been doing work while I can. I can only do so much because right. I'm a female and I got some health issues that I'm going through right now as well. But and I'm you have, still waiting you have on the an roof attorney that's estimate. working on all of this with you and yeah, okay. still waiting on the roof. The estate. estate. Okay. All right. I've painted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They I've, said you made progress. Yeah. That's good. I just didn't know I had to tell you guys. Right. <laughs> okay. Until November. Yeah. Um, the, for clarity or the record, I don't believe he's owner yet. But right. person representative at this Correct. Point. And I'm trying to sell the house. As I really don't want to put any more. We just put $26,000. Yeah, you have the house. authority. I'm just yeah, wanting to make sure. She has the authority. Here. Right. Okay. So we've established she has the authority to do all this. <clears throat> okay. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 11-2 to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for Consideration of fine of up to a thousand dollars per day. Did you want November? Yeah, that's it's what November. he said. November is eleven thirty. Right. Thank and you. I no, I, I don't know why I'm so. <laughs> it feels no, like a Monday. <laughs> Cut off for November is eleven two. Oh, I'll just write it. Okay, so did we have a motion so made? Seven. Okay, Ms. Hines made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Ms. Marsh. All in favor, say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Hey, just stay in touch. November, what did you say? I'm sorry. Second. 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 Yeah, just stay in touch. Yes, ma'am. With the code do. officer, and you'll get it all squared away, I'm sure. Thank you. I'm trying. Okay. All right. Have a blessed day. You too. Two. Now, case 12 is in compliance. Case 13 is in compliance. We are on page, we are on page <coughs> six, case 14. CEB 06-22-130, Gail Stark and George Sibley. Hi, good Mr. morning. Mr. Sibley, good morning. State your name and address for the record and be sworn in. Uh, George Sibley, 300 Yorktown Drive, Daytona Beach. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Stinson. Uh, good morning again. John Stinson, Code Inspector with the City. Qualifications are on file. Uh, since the last hearing, I have received emails from uh, Mr. Sibling's attorney. They have settled their insurance issues. Oh, they are waiting for the payments to come so they can begin the work. I'd like to amend this case to the November cutoff. Okay, good. That sounds good, right? Yeah, That's finally. Fine yeah. Okay, good. And uh, Mr. Stinson, is the... <clears throat> is the letter already in the record because you received it? Because I brought a hard copy. Yes. I, I just want to make sure that okay, you guys knew fine. where we were. Mm -hmm. okay. Fine. Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until 11-2 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration and fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? <coughs> motion, Ms. Roby. Is there a second? Second. Second. Ms. Himes, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Good Thank luck. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Yes, sir. No problem. All right. Case 15 is in compliance. Case 16. This is Mr. Stenson to CB 06 22 124. Yvonne Pierce. Go ahead, Mr. Stenson. I guess since the last hearing, I've received emails from uh, city officials. Uh, from the redevelopment department stating that this owner is uh, not eligible because his name is not on, he's not the owner. Um, <clears throat> okay, we have, first of all, it's her, Yvonne, right? Uh, that's correct. Yvonne okay. is deceased. Oh, um, wait a minute. I'm, all right, let's go, let's go back and let's get all this name stuff straightened <laughs> out. Okay, so Yvonne is deceased. That's correct. But... The name that house is still in her name. That's also correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, who is there anything? Hmm. What's the relationship? Yeah. What is the rela now? Who's this he you're talking about? Uh, that is her son, Paul. Paul uh, Pierce. He's residing there. Um. He has applied for assistance from the city. Uh, the city official, William Orender, from the Redevelopment Department, reviewed his application, uh, said he's not eligible because his name is not on 
uh, as the owner of the property. However, they have assured him that when he does have his name on the property, he will be eligible for this assistance. However, at this time, the city is asking for the imposition of a fine <coughs> of $100 per day. So <clears throat> you have not, I mean, have you had contact with this person? I have. Are they making any moves to get the house put into, is he making any moves to get the house put into his name? Or? It is currently in probate working so on So it that. is in probate. Yes. One other clarification, if I may. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Was this person present at the last meeting? I just no. Um, not at the last meeting. The meeting before that, they were here. Okay, so we've had. Okay, so with the finding of compliance, non-compliance, he was here. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, I think we we'll probably want to amend. Probably to amend that. Yes. Is that? So, yes, we would like to. Recommend to amend this case then. Okay. And we so, would like to amend this to maybe the November, the November cutoff. Okay. So just want to make sure there's cooperation going on and, you know, they're doing. Yes. Okay. So That's what I'm asking. What you're saying is he may or may not get through probate by then. The chances of him getting a grant is. What is there any funding available at CRA grants, or is that? Uh, he's been assured that he would be eligible for eligible. the assistance. But is yes, there any once money? It, once it goes through probate. Correct. So as he has the property within his his name and his possession, he will be eligible to get assistance from the city. Uh, can I see the debt? Would you point out the damage? Uh, is that a blue tarp on the back? Uh, it's a blue tarp on the roof. Um, also, there are shingles missing, as you can see there. Okay, that's better. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Okay. And that's just sporadic throughout the entire roof okay. with missing shingles. So that's basically what they're looking for is a, okay. All right. Any other questions? Chair will entertain motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondents, respondent until 11-2 to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 a day. Is there such a motion? I'll move. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. All right, Mr. Stinson, you have case number 17 to CEB 08-22-188, Rebecca Mary Carr. Uh, since the last hearing, there has been quite a bit of progress. All of the uh, outside storage has been removed. There is still some landscaping that needs to be addressed. Um, I've spoken with the property owner yesterday out on property, and she knows what she has to get done. I'd like to amend this case to the October cutoff. <clears throat> All right, so they are working on it, and they're in contact with you. Yes. Okay. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent <laughs> until, uh, uh, so the October cutoff, 10-5 to come into Compliance will be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? Seven. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Ms. Marsh. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Case number 18, page 7. CB 08-22-192. Brian Wildeson. Trustee, anyone here? No, they weren't mm -hmm. here last time either, right? No. Okay. What can you tell us? Uh, since the last hearing, there has been no contact, no change in the property. Um, city is recommending the imposition of a fine of one hundred dollars per day to be capped at ten thousand. Outside storage. Where's the outside storage? Uh, it's along the side of the uh, the building and, and going towards the rear. <coughs> uh, he's got some wood, some random wood from wherever. So he just doesn't, he's just ignoring uh, this? Actually, I don't believe that uh, anybody resides in the property. Who chose this color scheme? <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing on that. Yeah. <laughs> 
100 uh, a day? 100 per day. But he's been notified and... I've had no contact uh, whatsoever, and I've had to post the property. Okay. And that's the address that's on the land records? Yes. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today, which is September 8th. And continue until compliance is achieved to reach of a hundred dollars a day, and continue until compliance is achieved to reach a maximum of ten thousand dollars. So wait, you know what? Is it ten thousand dollars or is it fifteen? <clears throat> That's not a homesteaded property, correct? It, it's um, I'm just based but, on or our consideration is for uh, owner occupied property, yeah. and we normally look to the last status of the property, last okay, apparent status. Okay. My parents' status of this would have been occupied. All right. Is there such a motion? Ms. Himes. Mo Ms. Himes? Second. Second. Ms. Roby, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Mr. Stenson got another one here. 19, <laughs> CEB 08-22-187. Jake uh, and Hugh Coleman. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> State your name and address for the record and be sworn in. Hugh Coleman. Uh, my address is 1917 North Halifax Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32118. Okay. This is, I'm and, part uh, owner on this house. Jay Coleman, 323 Boylston Ave. Okay. Will you raise your right hand, please, both of you? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Stenson, what can you tell us? Uh, since last hearing, I have been in contact <clears throat> uh, with Mr. Coleman on multiple occasions. Um, the last information that we, uh, or that I've gotten, was that the uh, the permit was issued and it's waiting for inspection. Oh, good. Okay. Um, we have inspections from the city, and he has his own uh, engineer who's also working with him on that, and I will let him. Um, to give you the information on that, the city's position is that we amend this case to the October cutoff. Okay, what, what would you like to tell us? Okay, so this is an interesting case. Yes, um, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I spoke with uh, Keith Milney, who's the roofer, Milney Roofing, who put the roof on in 2016. Oh, I, okay. I've um, contacted him on multiple occasions, but rarely got in touch with right. him. But I did get in touch with him the other day, oh, good. and um, he had an engineer from Universal Engineering come out and inspect it and uh, looked at the flashing, I believe, and um, it, they you know, had a report, and the report was filed with the permitting um, mark, um, somebody down there, and I spoke with Mark yesterday to follow up on it to see if it could be issued. And he said that he didn't do what was everything that was needed to be done. He did have them look at the roof and do the flashing and that all looks fine, but he never got the final permit. Um, the final inspection was not completed, or at least is not in the paperwork. So, so the then, permit, the, so, it, hasn't been, it hasn't been final yet. Correct. That, no. And so that's then, all that needs to be done? Yes, but I called Universal Engineering yesterday to find out what was up with that and if they could just, if it was amend the report or what needed to be done. And they said that he never ordered the final inspection as part of the, um, and part of their engineer when he went out. So they never did a final inspection and he never paid for a final inspection. So they said a final inspection would be $450 more. Um, and so I called Keith Milney, and uh, he said, um, I, and at, first he, at first when I talked to him, he said, oh, okay, well, I'll call Universal and get that taken care of. And I said, okay. So then I followed up with Universal to find out what was, you know, the issue. And, um, and then I called Keith back, and 
Um, I didn't get a hold of him, and then I got a text from him saying, I'm broke, I can't afford more money for another few months, you can get an inspection for $450. The roofing guy sent that to you? Yes. <laughs> and that's where we're at. So I didn't know how to proceed at this point in time. When, that's, that's something you're going to have to decide on your own how to proceed. When did Universal do the original inspection? Um, I think they did it on August 28th. And now they want four hundred. Well, they did the inspection. To your inspection. No, I think what happened was they did the inspection, and it was, and he had specified that it was for the flashing and to make sure all that was that correct. That hadn't been done at the time. And that was done, but they, as part of the inspection, he never ordered a final inspection for when they came out. So they said for the gonna, city to come out and do a for, final inspection. Um, well, not for the city, but for the engineer to give the report of final inspection. So he said. For the Universal to come back out, it would be $450 or more. Can yeah, the city go out and do a final inspection? Isn't that what you... My, my, my speculation is, and this is only speculation, okay. is that they're looking for trying to uh, satisfy the contractor before he, he pulls the contract that the uh, roof is sufficient, and that's the inspection that they're talking about. So they're trying to get a final for the uh, contract before he pulls. Is that where we at? And so, yeah. and so they're waiting for that. So it's not the city's inspection. It's an inspection okay. that the contractor wants. The contract. So okay. The contract. All right. Okay. That's. I'm, I yeah. was pull confused because we terms. talk about final. You know, yeah. final. So, yeah. So okay. they're they're hanging on, waiting to satisfy themselves that they're in the position to move forward. But that's what it sounds like, and it's only speculation. Okay. But I don't understand. I think if you're right. To the roof. No, he didn't. Cares. Oh. Through to the roofer. Now he's claiming he don't have the money to pay. Well, I think he paid for because his. The license, I guess, was sanctioned or something. Yeah, I think we're getting to points that's probably beyond. So, right. So yeah, he, so course. he paid for right. Universal and to come out, but he didn't order what needed to be done it, or everything. My, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you bought this house after the roof was put on. You didn't put the roof on. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Yes. So the previous owner put the roof on. And we were unaware of the situation. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, and your recommendation, Mr. Stenson? Um, I want to amend this case to the October cutoff. Hopefully okay. Hopefully we mm -hmm. have some resolution. But we can't it. tell you what to do about the $450. It's got nothing to do with the city or okay. anything else, you know? So, so, you so if he doesn't get them to come back out and is not planning on doing it for months, then we're just going to be in the same position next month. Pretty much. <laughs> I, I do have a suggestion. If you just keep in contact with your inspector and make just, sure he knows what's going on, and he'll, as long as you know that you're in good faith doing everything you right. can do, um, which may mean having to go some work, I don't know, but you know, keep in contact with them. Okay. Them, and, right. Um, do that. That's that we'll, we'll be gonna, looking for it next time around. You're going to need some kind around. of inspection for your mitigation when it comes time for your insurance. So you. You've got to go ahead and do it. Right. Okay. Um, so the chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 10-5 to come into compliance or be returned to the uh, subsequent meeting of the board for consideration or fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? So move. Motion Ms. Roby, second Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Huh. All right. Case number 20, CEB 07 21 223, Tracy Smith at 605 Willie Drive. Not here last time, not here this time. Okay. Uh, all right, good morning, Ms. Kirk. Good morning. Um, this case is uh, returning before you again. Uh, Mrs. Smith, or Ms. Smith, she is on the city's housing assistance program waiting list since June of 2019. Uh, staff is requesting to amend to the January cutoff for compliance. How long has she been on this? Uh, she was placed on the list in 2019, hmm. June of tw June 17th, yeah. 2019. Oh, that's okay. Uh, and there was some... She had the roof done. Yeah, the roof was done. Okay. 
thought everything's all straightened out with that. Right. She had her... Um, the name was confusing. Right. She had her married name, and then she went back to her right. maiden okay. name. All right. Two lists. And... Okay, so till January, which is January 4, was that what it was? Do I remember that the cutoff was January, January 4th? January 4th cutoff. Okay. Chair will entertain motion to amend the previous order non compliance and allow respondent until January 4 to come, 2023 to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. So moved. Ms. Himes, motion. Second? Second. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. All right, case number 21, CEB 02-22-65, Kirk Murphy and Don Roberts. They were here last time. Are they here this time? Okay. Uh, this case is also brought before you again. They are also on the city's uh, assistance waiting list uh, since November 30th of 2021. Uh, staff is requesting to amend to the January 4th cutoff date for compliance. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until January 4th to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration or fine of up to $1,000 a day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion, Ms. Himes, second? Second. Second, Ms. March. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 22 is in compliance. Case number 23 is CEB 01-22-39, Sarah Riles, Edwards, and Devin Robinson on Zoom. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please state your name and address for the record. Valencia Robinson, sixteen twenty eight Piccadilly Drive, Daytona Beach, Florida. Fifteen twenty eight what drive? Piccadilly Drive. That's oh, Piccadilly. Okay. Piccadilly. How are you related to everyone? My son purchased the home from Miss Sarah. Okay. In February. Um, Can I get her to be sworn in, please? Year. All right, let's get you sworn in first, and then we'll. I'll ask you that okay. again. Will you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so um, your son has given you permission to speak, right? Yes. For him. Okay. <laughs> All right, I, I need kind of an update on what's going on here. And first, we're going to hear from Ms. Kirk, and then we'll let you tell us, okay? Just, just okay. Clarification. Your son is Devin Robinson? Yes, okay. yes. Devon Robinson. Devon? Yeah, Devon. Yes. Devon. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Kirk. Okay, thank you. Uh, so since the last hearing, there has been some progress. Uh, we do have a permit uh, application submitted from a contractor for the carport. Um, after speaking with Mrs. Robinson um, about the NACA program, which I'm unfamiliar with, it seems that it's going to be a long process, uh, similar to like a Rebuild Florida right. type case. Right. Uh, so, so these are the COVID funds or whatever? Um, is, that, is that what that no. is? Mrs. Robinson can no? explain it better okay. about the NACA. Who can explain what it, what? It's just another housing program. Okay. You have a copy of the application. Do I have a copy of it? Uh, not on me. I don't. Did you have one? Yeah, I, I verified everything with the, the funds that were submitted and everything okay. like that. Um, so with that, uh, staff is requesting to amend uh, to the, I guess, a January cutoff for compliance. Okay. Okay, uh, is there anything you'd like to add, uh, Ms. Robinson? Well, 
The only um, thing that I really need to add is that thank you for your patience. I, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So my son purchased this house at the age of 23 uh-huh. from my neighbor. And um, this program that he's going through is a great program, but there's so many rules and regulations. So the contractor had to be certified through the NACA organization. Uh-huh. So that is what's taking a lot of the time and then having to get, we had a the um, engineer doing his part. Everybody's backed up. I would have never imagined that it would take so long right. to do, you know, everything. We have the window person coming on Monday at nine to, to give us the windows so that we can get the permit for the windows and get that started. But I didn't even realize that for every single step of this, you have to have a permit for every single thing. Right. So anyway, and my son is 23, 24 now. He's a classroom teacher, so he knows nothing. (laughs) I've been a homeowner for 20 plus years, and this is just a lot. All right. So So, let, uh, let me ask you a question. So you've already applied for this. When you get this work done... What, that you have to apply for permits or the uh... the money is sitting there when he purchased okay. the house. Okay, he has seventy plus thousand dollars sitting in the bank, and you just take the draws for okay. each part right. of it. Okay, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to know. Okay, yeah, all right, and it's been sitting there since February. Of this wow. year, I think it's the contractors yeah. that the part the allowance to let them do the work. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> the chair will entertain motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until January fourth to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to a thousand dollars per day. Such so a motion. Miss Himes made the motion. Second. Second. Second, Ms. Roby, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries. Okay, so we'll just follow this process through the moment okay, there. You're doing you. what you need to do, so that's okay, good. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for calling in. All right, case 24, oh, CEB 08-22-197, Abraham Hutchinson. No. Okay, so wasn't here last time, not here this time. Your only contact last time was a tenant. That's correct. Okay. What's going on? Okay, since the last hearing, um, I've still had no contact. Um, There hasn't been any progress uh, to speak of. Um, Staff's requesting a $200 a day fine to a max of $15,000. So nothing's been done at all. Um, one of the one uh, one of the RVs was moved, but then when I went back, it was With back. back. Well, so it's kind yeah. of a back and, and forth. And is that still being used as living quarters? I assume hard oh, it's hard to tell. I went there yesterday, and the the RV that's in the back. I don't know if you can. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, there there was stairs or steps leading up to the door. They weren't there, and the door was shut. So it's possible no. Uh, I'm not hun- yeah, okay. 100% sure. That all right. was June. Well, all right. Those stairs are now gone, but the RV is still there. So, Any questions? No. All right. Chair will entertain a motion to oppose a fine of $200 per day against the respondent effective today, September 8th, and continue until compliance is achieved to reach as a maximum $15,000. Such a motion? I move. Motion, Ms. Roby. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Marsh, all in favor say aye. aye. Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. All right, so case number 25, CEB 08 22 181. John Hyatt. Mr. Hyatt here. All right, so are we going to hear this as a new case? No, what we want to do on this. Um this would like to go ahead and pull this at, at um, well, we can't pull it. We are dismissing it, but we have to run a position of a fine 
Okay. What would you uh, like to do? We'll ask, ask for dismissal on this. There's, there's certain circumstances where not, we believe that the owners, well, I think we've been able to confirm the owner's deceased. It's a Fannie Mae property, and so we're going to do some follow-up with Fannie Mae before we proceed on a code action. So you're dismissing it? Yeah, so we'd ask that it be dismissed at this time. We'll determine where we go from here. So Mr. Hyatt is deceased? We don't know. Okay. Yes, our findings are the Mr. and Mrs. Hyatt are both deceased. Uh, they're We're not able to identify any heirs That's on our search. Right. Okay. So we want to just dismiss this mm -hmm. case and all right. Chair will entertain a motion to dismiss the case. So motion to Ms. Hot. I'm sorry. Without prejudice? Oh uh, without prejudice. Without yeah. prejudice. Ms. Himes made motion. Second. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. We'll go on to page number nine, CEB, uh, case 26, CEB 05-22-1115, 05-22-1115, John Carter. Anyone here for the case? Okay. Ms. Kirk. Okay. Uh, since the last hearing, there hasn't been any more progress uh, done. I haven't had any uh, contact, any more contact since the last hearing. Uh, staff is requesting a hundred dollar a day fine to a max of ten thousand. So up until this point, there had been some. Up until when you were here last time, there had been progress. There was a lot of progress. Yeah, that's what you said. And then it just stopped. And then they, also the communication stopped as well. He was. Kind of elderly, wasn't he? No, um, she showed up. He didn't uh, show up. She should. The, the fiance, fiance showed, showed up. up. Yep. And he's a truck driver, I believe. Um, so, and I think she was the one doing, uh, trying to fix the house up. And um, but then we still got the interoperable vehicle, and then the the back side of the home. There's unpermitted windows and um, dirt, okay. grime, exposed surfaces. Okay. Any questions? Uh, going on since uh, November of 21. So right, it's almost been a year, you know, close enough. Here. Ten months, anyway. And how much were, did you recommend, Sarah? Uh, 100 to 10,000. Okay. But people are still living there now. I, I don't hard. think it's occupied. I, I'm not 100% sure, though. Broke up, that's why the progress yeah. could be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Chair will entertain motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today, September 8th, 2022, and continue until compliance is achieved to reach a maximum of $10,000. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. All right, Mr. Harrington has left the room. <laughs> We can continue because we still have a quorum, and we'll start with our new cases. All right, uh, we'll start case 27, CEB 09-22-209, Lori McPherson. No, all right. <laughs> Inspector Jean Baptiste, uh, this was a field observation on January 19th, 2022, with the following violations failure to repair peeling and discolored paint, failure to remove dirt and grime, failure to repair discolored fascia board, failure to remove all exterior storage and debris. Notice a violation was generated and sent certified mail. It was delivered on February 11th, 2022, with 30 days to comply. Upon a site reinspection on June 15th, 2022, the facility was not in compliance. I've had several communications with the owner. In fact, I spoke to her last Friday as well as yesterday. This is the current condition. She had to um, treat everything is in compliance. I apologize, except for the retaining wall that needs to be taken care of. At this time, she's simply going to, this was the before, um, it just needs to, uh, she's almost done. 
Let's just say that. Staff is requesting a finding of non-compliance, compliance by the next cutoff. Then. Chair, I'll entertain motion to find respondent non-compliance or respondent to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, 10-5-2022, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. Come on. Motion, Ms. Roby, second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Butler, are you here? Uh, actually... This next case has been put in compliance as of today. Case 28 is in compliance? Yes, ma'am. All right, good. We like that. Okay. Case 29, Mr. Alderman, CEB 09-22-203, Nepitali Castro and Luisa Amador. Good morning again. Good morning. Still, fortunately. Yeah, we're getting there. Good morning. Good morning. Please state your name and address for the record. Nepali Castro, the address is 851 Kingston Avenue, Daytona Beach. Okay. I'm sorry, your first name was? Nep Neptali. Okay. Will you raise spelled correctly, right? N-E-P-T-A-L-I. Correct. Okay. Yes. Will you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth? I'm yes. sorry. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the Testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, we'll hear from Mr. Alderman, and then you can okay. talk if you'd like. Okay, uh, this is CEB 09-22-203 at uh, 851 Kingston Avenue. This case was opened on a referral from the building department on June 20th, 2022, for construction without a permit for a concrete driveway and sidewalk. The first notification was on June 27, 2002, with a stop work order posting. Uh, compliance was due 7-11-2022. Uh, last inspection was September 5. I have been in contact with Mr. Naptali uh, fairly consistently. Uh, he's found he's been responsible for a number of uh, permit issues. I've also been in uh, contact with Melissa at the building department and Mary Wilsonbacher at the development review uh, department. Do you want to okay. determine? What do we need to? What What needs to be done here? They need. Oh, I, yeah, the recommendation. Okay. Uh, staff recommends a determination of non-compliance to come into compliance by October fifth cutoff. Okay, so it, so what they need is so they have a stop work. So until they can start work, they need to get a permit, right? That's what. Well, yes, and he probably could explain it better uh, by going through these okay. three different people, but uh, yeah. that would be okay. up to him. Go ahead. Yeah, I got everything done. I'm only waiting. Um, the Melissa from the building department, she told me I got to involve the universal engineer because when I bought the house, somebody make addition and open the permit. So they never close the permit. And when I bought the house, the... Um, the realtor told me it's everything is straight. He, he gave me the survey, the plans, and everything. And you know, people living from 2008 to now in the house, I no ask nothing in the city about that for the addition in the back. But so when I'm coming to the city, we, Melissa told me it's an open permit. So I'm working on everything. I pulled. The, I got a general contract to pull. He already working the permit, and I pulled the other permit for close the existing permit for the previous owner. Everything is worked out. You know, we're doing everything. Okay, so like, that's like, good. And just keep in touch with Mr. Alderman and, yeah. Yeah, we only need a time, time. But it's not fixed yet. So, you know, that's what we have to reflect here, that it's just not right. fixed yet. Um, yes. Okay. Any questions? Chair, I'll entertain a motion to find respondent non-compliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date. Is that reasonable for all that needs to be done? I believe so. Okay. Or be Ms. Harrington's back here. What? Ms. Harrington's back here. Ms. Harrington's back in the Mr. Harrington's back. Oh, I'm back. sorry. I'm sorry. Back. <laughs> Mr. Back. Harrington's back. He's back. I didn't hear the whole case. Okay, but he's not going to be voting. All right. Chair, I'll entertain... A motion to find respondent non-compliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, uh, which is 10-5, would be returned to the board for consideration or fine up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? So moved. Motion is Heim. Second? Second. 
Second, Ms. Marsh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. All right. So just keep in touch. It's the best thing you can do. Yeah, I only wait. And I, I know, we know you're things. working, so that's yeah, good. Thank okay. You. All, right. all right. Case number 30 is in thank compliance. You. Case number 31, CEB 09-22-208, Wendy Thatcher, estate. Anyone here for that? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. No. Okay. All right. What's the story here? Uh, this is for 144 North Keach. Uh, the case was opened on October 26, 2021. For vacant structure, no running water, electricity, property maintenance, damaged fencing, protective treatment, and trash and debris issues. First notification was December 22, 2021, uh, posted on that date. Compliance was due by January 27, 2022. Last inspection was September 5th. No contact with the owner, and I do believe she is deceased. Uh, property has been condemned by the city. Uh, property is unsecured. Uh, Kim Flaherty, Flaherty has been involved with the, um, uh, notified by the mortgage company that's in, in foreclosure. Who's Kim Flaherty? She works. Uh, uh, Works Sears. Okay. I mean, the, I, she works I in permits and licensing. Permits and licensing. Okay. Yeah. All right. um, so the number of people involved and uh, the properties in foreclosure, and it's also a 24-hour arrest uh, program. Uh, the staff de uh, requested termination of non-compliance. October 5th cutoff, please. Okay. Is this a <laughs> Go ahead, questions? Is this a health and safety issue at present? Well, well it's not secured, so. Well, it's already condemned. It. If, if it's under, it, you said it's under condemnation? Well, yes. Okay, so also the termination that's been made by the structural in terms okay. of safety and well-being. So wouldn't the bank, since it's in foreclosure, wouldn't the bank be responsible for it to tear it down? We're not at that point yet. I, they're dealing with that at a separate board. <laughs> right. But, that's the but, the the, but condo, building, the condemnation board. What's it called? The building and yeah. whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What is it called? Whatever board. <laughs> the other board deals with condemnation. It's another real estate board. Yeah. Uh, deals with that. So there's nothing really for us to do except, you know. We're doing uh, a yeah. compliance yeah, or non-compliance. Yeah, until it is resolved, I, I think the and point that was yeah, made is it's that it's moving. Is, yeah, there's, right. a, there's a um, uh, trespass arrest site. It's been, yeah. So they've taken care of the things. Right. To keep it at least from being right. more and more blighted. Than it is. Okay. Where is this? Peach Street. Street. So your recommendation was what? Uh, non-compliant. Non yes. Chair on chain motion to find respondent non-compliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, which is 10-5-2022, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 a day. So the motion. They still haven't condemned it. When it comes back, are we going to be able to impose a fine, or it just keeps coming back? Can we want to wear it? Tear it down. Yeah, it remains in our compliance, so it'll be in our yes. compliance and based can, on the, the structure. We can put a fine on whoever they We can if we want to, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and you're right, if there was some intervention that some party of interest wanted to make, they they have a process for that. But it's not through us. But it's not through us. Correct. Separate board. All right. All right. The, um, Ms. Himes made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second, second Ms. Marsh, all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 32, CEB 09-22-211. Michael O'Neill, Paul M., and Nora Schaefer. Good morning. Mike Schaefer, 2723 Dock Avenue. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Thank you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony about to provide the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, we'll hear from Remember, Mr. Yes, just go get ahead. a clarification on Mr. Schaefer. When you said Mike Schaefer, are you the Paul M. Schaefer? Or you I'm Mike? Michael O'Neill Schaefer. Okay, so Paul M. is my father. Okay. He's passed. Great. Thank you. That's my name. Okay, all right. Name, so this, the, okay. I'm sorry. That, no, not your fault. The last okay. name spelt wrong. 
Not the uh, oh, it is? Yeah. All right, let's hear how you spell it. S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R. I kind of questioned O'Neill as well. I don't know if you're part of it. Schaefer. I said, I, I, didn't, I questioned the spelling of the O'Neill as well. Is that correct, or do you know? The old spelling? Uh, no, on Michael O'Neill, is he a relative as well? That's me. Right, he's oh, Michael O'Neill. Is me. It, so it's O plus. No, my, okay. <laughs> my, my parents got the loan for the house, and I paid it off. Okay. All right. Now I'm just and now I'm working on my roof. Here we go. Okay. okay. So, but O'Neill is spelled correctly. O apostrophe N I E L. Yes. Okay. E L L. Two L's. Yes. Okay. So we'll get all this corrected. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Good. All right. We're going to hear from Mr. Bostwick, and then we'll let you talk. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Bostwick. All right, good morning. Uh, Inspector Bostwick, Neighborhood Services, credentials on file. All right, this case was opened back on October 10th of 2021 for softening facial damage. First notification was on October 22nd of 21. Compliance was due by November 23rd of 21. Last day of reinspection was September 6th of 2022. Result now in compliance. I've been in contact with the owner. Um, he did get a permit pulled back on February 10th of 2022 to fix the roof. Uh, since then, the permit has expired on August 9th of 2022. Um, I was by there on the 6th, and it looks like it's almost done. Yeah. He just needs to get it final. Staff requests finding of noncompliance, but compliance due next cutoff. <laughs> Madam Chair, if I may, I just had to ask him, can you spell your last name again for me, please? S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R. Okay. Well, one F. One F. Like the old Schaefer beer. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Everybody got the name straight on this now? <laughs> okay. All right. So all you need to do is get get it final, but it's not final yet. So is that right? Right. Okay. Um, I had all the inspections for the nail off and the sheathing, mm -hmm. or the uh, nail off of the sheathing and the, the dry in. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it owner builder, so I'm doing it myself with my okay. sons. So it's it's been a nightmare. Um, it's a lot of work, and it's hard to do after a day of work so we get up there on weekends and we do the best we can right. so um i don't even think october is going to be okay because i still have hurricane clips and everything else to do and i don't want to get hit again for non-compliance so well it would be the same case um, okay but do you think you could have it done by November 2nd, uh, yes. that would all be done? Yeah, completed. What, what's the board? I said fine with mm -hmm. me. I only got the back half the shingle, and then I'm doing the hurricane clips and my, um, I don't know what they call them, up between the, the trusses where you put your vent holes. That whole left side of that garage that you saw, I had to rebuild completely. Okay. As you can see, it's, okay. it's a nice looking house now. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at. Okay. All right. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to find respondent noncompliance and order the respondent to come into compliance by November 2nd, mm -hmm. 2022. Yeah, thank you. Or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? Some. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Just and stay in touch with Mr. Bostwick. That's I the do. best. That's the best all, thing I, to I do. I see him all the time in my neighborhood. Good. That's the best thing to <laughs> so do. So he's doing a good job in the neighborhood. He keeps good. everything straight. Good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Good. Thanks, sir. All right. All right. Now we'll move on to case 33, CB09-22-212. Mark Ty Markham. Hello. Good morning. State your name and address for the record and be sworn in. Uh, Mark Markham, 402 Vermont Avenue. 
Will you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. All right, this case we'll was... We'll let Mr. Bostrick talk and then... Okay. Go ahead. All right, this case was opened on April 5th of 2022. Dirt and grind, discard the paint. First notification was on April 11th of 2022. Compliance was due by March 12th of 2022. Last day of reinspection, September 6th of 2022. Non-compliance, I've had no contact with the owner. Staff requests finding of non-compliance with compliance due next cutoff. Okay, what would you like to tell us? We can see that uh, there's some overgrown landscaping. We can see the discolored paint and, and the dirt that's on there. So what would you like to tell us? Um, it's just something that does need need to be done. Okay. Um, uh, I've, I've not had contact with him. I work work at night, which is probably the reason why I've not been able to talk to the people who have been, who have been on the prop property. I've also been on uh, vacation, uh, but uh, his observation of the house is correct. It needs to be okay. painted. And okay, so you're going to work on that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Questions from the board? Uh, and make sure you stay in touch with Mr. Bostwick. Next cutoff, Dan. Yeah, the next cutoff. Uh, Terrell, Terrell entertain motion to find respondent in noncompliance or respondent to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, 10 5 2022, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 a day. Such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion was time. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Um, I'd like to possibly extend that into November if possible. Well, Is let's it? see what happens next month. We can, you know, you, you'll come back here. We want you to come back here next month. Uh, and you stay in contact with Mr. Bostwick. And at that time, we'll see how much progress you've made, too. Okay. Um because right now it doesn't look like there's been a lot of progress and you were notified in April. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So just get on it. Okay. <laughs> All okay. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Case number 34, CEB 09-09-22-21. Carl D. and Charles Weaver. Good morning. Good morning. State your name and address for the record, please. It is Tara Kendall at uh, 115 Park Avenue, Daytona Beach, 32118. Your last name again? Kendall. It's K-E-N-D-A-L-L. -L. And how are you related to Carl and Charles Weaver? Carl is my grandfather and Charles is my uncle, and they are both deceased. Can I get you to raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. And you live there now? For the time being. Well, okay, you live there. Uh, they're both deceit. Well, I, we'll hear from Mr. Bostwick first. All right. Um, this case was opened back on April 8th of 2022 for peeling paint exteriors on, the, on the exterior surface of the home, fascia, soffits damage, dirt and grime on the home, exterior wall damage in the front and the side of the home, overgrown landscaping. First notification was on April 20th of 2022. Compliance was due by May 21st of 2022. Last day of reinspection was September 6th of 2022. Result noncompliance. I've been in contact with the owner's granddaughter, Tina, on a multiple occasions. Staff requests a finding of noncompliance with compliance due next cutoff. Let me ask you a question, Ms. Kendall. Do you own the house now? No, ma'am. It is currently in probate. It is in probate. Yes, okay. it has been in probate for quite some time. Um, my father is the one who was originally the PR or personal representative. It has, um, I have... So, of your... Your father was the representative of your grandfather. That, right? 
Sort of. That's okay. I don't know if there's enough time in the next month to explain or that. Uncle, all right, never mind. Okay. <laughs> it's in probate, though. It's in probate, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, the letter I have here, my father was in, was the PR up until... Your father, not your uncle. Okay. Yes, his name is Ronald Weaver. Okay. He was the PR up until just recently, um, within the last month or so. The court of Lucia County has removed him for other reasons that don't pertain to this particular case. Um, from He's 73 years old, and I've pretty much been trying to do everything. Um, they are in the process of reassigning the PR to um, one of my cousins, which is part of the long story. Okay. Um, right. Well, yeah, I don't want to get into your personal no. history. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. It has... Um, it's, it's still, the judge in Volusia County gave a minimum of 60 days to sign a new PR. We're as, still, as of when? As of, let's see, he was removed, there was a hearing, the date was December 20th, 2021, it's the last court date that we went to, and it was that date that, no, not this, I'm sorry, no. I apologize, <laughs> I apologize, July 25th. Of of this, this year, year was, yes. the, was August the, to September. The so by September 25th, something has to happen, right? Right. It'll be assigned to either one of my cousins that are part of the probate, um, unfortunately. But um, they will be the ones that are in charge of everything from that point forward. My dad has officially. They will been be responsible for. They will be responsible for everything, yes. Correct. Um, okay. My dad, of course, will still be part of it. He's just no longer okay, the one in charge. Okay, that's okay. Um, the home itself, um, this letter is explaining all of that. It's from their attorney. Um, explaining all of that I've just said. And um, it's also a, a statement to say that the house is for $300,000. It's not, as you can see from the pictures, that picture in particular that's showing at the very bottom under the windows of the corner. You can see the rot. Yeah, yeah. That's the front porch. It's on the side and the, and the front. This home has been in this condition for well over since I, I, I arrived in May 2019. In fact, it was okay, worse well, than I got here. So it's time for us to issue yeah. a non-compliance. Correct. And, and it, it really is, and you're not Whoever's going to be responsible is going to be responsible, and your name's not well, showing up. So the, it's not in compliance. We can. No, that. I understand that. Okay. It, that's what I'm we're what here. I'm here to say is that once the once everything is taken care of as pro, far as probate, this home will be knocked down. Well, my cousins fine. are the ones that are putting. In the meantime, this house is not in compliance. It is that's, not. That's all we have. That's it is all not all we can rule on right now. I understand. Okay. Um, my I'm just get. I'm just getting information from you, if you know, just just to make sure that you stay in contact um, with Mr. Bostwick. Let him know what's going on. Absolutely. Um, be, you are. It, you know, it's good that you came here to represent them today. Right. But I, I would have loved to bring my dad. He's not. He doesn't think very clearly without oxygen, and he doesn't use it properly. Well, okay. Oh, um, uh, whatever. He's, no, he's okay. So, uh, but the house is not in compliance, and it, by your own admission, it hasn't been in compliance for a long time. So, the chair will entertain a motion to find respondent in non compliance and order the respondent to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, which is 10 5, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. So moved. Motion, Mr. Harrington. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. That's all we can do. I understand. Okay. Thank you. We have a way of getting a hold of the PR. Do you, do you are, when you're going to get appointed? No, I mean here. Thank you. You're going to be able to get that on your record? Yeah, we'll be able to get that record, but if uh, oh. you, you're going to be following up with uh, the inspector. Yes. Until that, until it switches over to the uh, PR, until that appointment comes, just make sure he knows that that appointment's been made. Absolutely. Okay. But yeah, Amy said we're pulling. All right, a Zoom call.
Case 35, CEB 09-22-204. Bonnie Keating. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you hear us? Hi. Yes, we, okay. I can hear right. you. State your name and address for the record, please, and be sworn in. My name is Zareda Nordrum. I own the home at 618. South Landvale Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. Yeah, so she's a witness. All right, be sworn in. Give the hand. There you go. All right, hold on a second. Go ahead. All right. I'm sorry, can you repeat your name, please? Zareda Nordrum. Okay. Thank you. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, or nothing but the truth? It is. Thank you. I do. Um, Ms. Northrum, how are you related to Bonnie Keating? I am not related to her. I am the neighbor two doors down to the left. So she's I own the home there. I'm understanding, Madam Chair, that she's here as a witness. Is that correct, uh, Inspector? Oh, that's that why correct. the address is different then. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you're a witness. Yes. Okay. You are not represent, are you representing her? No, I no. am not. Okay, got it. Good. I just, okay, that's fine. All right, so we're going to let Ms. Kirk tell us about this, and then if you want to say something, you can, okay? And just some clarification okay. as well, Madam Chair. Okay, may. go ahead. Yeah, just want to make sure there's no one here that's here on behalf of um, right. uh, Ms. Keating. No one in here is here on behalf of Bonnie Keating, so apparently not. So okay. that will be a non-appearance for the owner. So this is a, the complaint person? Well, yeah. well, we don't know yet. We're, go we're going to get Ms. Kirk to tell us what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I received a complaint on March 4th of 2022 regarding unpermitted accessory structures, some of which located on the city's easement. Um, I opened a case for unpermitted accessory structures. First notification was March 28th of 2022. I reinspected on September 7th of 2022. Um, I have not had any contact with the owner. Staff's requesting an order of non-compliance with compliance by the next cutoff. So the accessory structures are the tents and what else? Um, so there's a, a tiny house. There's three sheds on the property. There's a tiny house. Those are in the city's easement right there. There's no permit for those. There's also a, a temporary carport um, in the front of the house um, that's been there since I have was brought uh, to this property in March. So uh, that's also unpermitted. Uh, there's a, quite a few uh, structures on the property that are not permitted. And the fence was also extended into the city's easement as well without a permit. Are, are these structures rented out for living quarters? Um, the uh, the witness that is on Zoom might be able to testify better to that. I don't know that uh, as a fact, but I have heard that as a complaint. Well, it's obviously not in compliance, but go ahead and tell us what's going on in your words, Ms. Northrum. Oh, well... For, uh, for my portion of it, I was told by Miss Keating herself, but her name is Bon Bon in the neighborhood, as she's known, uh, when we were touring her property, that uh, she uh, is allowed to operate an Airbnb and also vacation rentals, and that she is also, she has a live-in lady that cleans for her and and, and um, lives in the little house. Okay. Now, we were so uh, we we uh, I asked her these questions because we own the home. We bought the home at six eighteen South Landvale Avenue, right? And we were told that all of the property behind the house belonged to us. 
as we own the property. Well, um, so we wanted to approach the city so that we could build a mother-in-law suite on the back of the property. We were told, no, we could not because that was not our property. We did not know that at the time. So we uh, were told that we needed to, this is when I contacted the city and had someone come out and tell me, well, if that's not my property, where's my property line? So we were told to get a survey, which we did. The surveyor came out, He, they surveyed the property, they told us, no ma'am, half of that property does not belong to you, it belongs to the city, you cannot build on it. Okay. Okay, this, uh, so we uh, put up, a, we're, we're having a fence put up on the property in compliance with the city's ordinance, which okay. Mr. Phil, uh, uh, well, I don't know his name real good. Tremarkey. Yes, Tremarkey. Um, he sent us a letter telling us exactly where from the easement we can build and we cannot. I, you know what? I don't mean to cut you off, but you're, this is not your case. So what do you want to tell us about no, Ms. That's what Ms. Trying, Keating's that's what I'm case? That's what we're I'm allowing trying. you to we're, listen to me. We're allowing you to testify as a witness. So tell yes. us I, what's going on with your property. This, this isn't a case against you. No, this, I understand. This, I, uh, yes, ma'am. This yes, ma'am, I understand. Okay, I understand. so tell us what is going on. I mean, I, what you yes. want us to know about case, the case uh, against Bonnie Keating. Okay, yes. Basically, I was just contacted um, in reference to the fact that she denied having a renter, a person living in the little house in the on the premises, and um, I, I gave a statement saying she herself told me she did, in fact, have someone living there. Okay. All right. So she's admitted to having someone live there to you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't well, appear to be the issue before you today, though. That, that is correct. Yeah. All right. The issue before us, let, let me just tell you what we're going to rule on today. Yes, ma'am. There are unpermitted accessory structures and plenty of them on the property. We can yes, see on the pictures. That is what the case is about, and that's what we're going to be ruling on. Yes, ma'am. And we've seen those structures. Yeah. We Okay. Yes. All right. So we see them through pictures, and you're testifying as a witness that those structures exist. Yes, yes, okay. ma'am. All right, so that's all we're doing today. A question for Mr. Jackson. Okay. Uh, I, if they're encroaching on city property, do you need the code board to be involved? Why don't you just have the right to? Well, we would like the code board involved. That's not the issue. Oh, and you, and the, right, and not only that, there are other structures that aren't on. I mean, all of these structures are not permitted. Yeah, I'm talking about okay. the addition. You're just talking seems, about the seems city. To me, if the city has an encroachment on their property, they don't need the code board to tell them they can't do it. Well, we have a violation of the code. So right. anytime we have a violation of the code, okay. it, it, it wouldn't matter to us for the code board okay. involvement. All right. Okay. So all we're ruling on today, because you're involved in this conversation, Ms. Northam, is that these are indeed unpermitted accessory structures, and that's what we're going to rule on right now. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Kirk, uh, your recommendation is next cutoff. That's correct. Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to find respondent in noncompliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, which is October 5th, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. So moved. With a uh, motion this time. Second. $20,000. $1,000 up oh, to $20,000. No, up to $1,000 oh, a day. It doesn't matter. It's not an Airbnb. And and it doesn't matter. We're not at that. We're not fining her. We're just letting her know that it could. the fine could be as much as $1,000 a day, whether it goes up to 10 or 15 or whatever. Okay, that will be determined during the stage when we find, if we find her. Okay. So we have a motion from Ms. Hines. Do we have a second? Second. 
Second from Ms. Marsh. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. All right. Thank you. Will the city will you know this case will proceed through the city and you can watch its progress on uh, on the web on our website, the city website on eTrackit, or you can call Ms. Kirk. You must. Do you have Ms. Kirk's? You, yes. You've we, been in yeah. contact. Yes, with, okay. So you can follow it that way. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay. Case number 36, CEB 09 22 205, L. Watts, LLC. Anyone here representing them? No. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Kirk. Okay. On March 14th of 2022, I received a complaint uh, from the building department regarding uh, work, unpermitted work that was being done outside of the scope of the permit. So I opened a case for work without permits, which include electrical, HVAC, interior renovations, unpermitted windows, uh, stucco, and shed. And then there's a hazardous stairs and a hazardous concrete uh, driveway. First notification was June 9th of 2022. I reinspected the property on September 7th of 2022, noncompliance. I have had contact with the owner. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, staff's requesting an order of noncompliance with compliance by the next cutoff. Okay. General Entertainment Motion for Respondent Respondent Noncompliance or Respondent Come into Compliance by the next cutoff date, which is October 5th, 2022, will be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. That's your motion? Mm -hmm. Motion, Ms. Marsh, second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. aye. Like sign opposed. No. Okay. When you, you use the word hazardous, hazardous means that it should be uh, closed up. It shouldn't be, the public should not be allowed. That's a health and safety issue. If it's hazardous, if it's not hazardous, don't use that word. But hazardous means to me nobody wants to go on that property or near it. You have a staircase that could collapse is what I get out of the word hazardous staircase. So I, am I nitpicking? Maybe so. But uh, uh, I think it's a health and safety issue. So you've already passed it. So We did. I'm sorry yeah. I didn't know you wanted to speak. I would have called on you. Um, is it? Well, we've already. Pretty voted. Have we voted or did we just, yeah. Okay, we, we voted. So it was one, two, three, four to one. Okay. So. Now, Jeff, I can, I can say this. I, I hate for us to go forward if we have a question of concern of safety. Uh, and All right, I'm I just sure didn't know whether we be... could, after we had voted yes, on it. Someone from the affirmative side can make a motion. Reconsider. Oh, make a motion? Yeah. Well, you like to make to be somebody that on the affirmative side. All right, Ms. Himes has made a motion to reconsider. Ms. Roby's a second. No, right. it was Ms. Marsh. Oh, all right. But I'll make the motion to reconsider. All right, and who who made the second? All right, Ms. Marsh. So all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion now carries. Now it's back on the floor. Now it's back on the floor. Thank you very much. Okay. And so there was a way to do it. Okay. I don't know how much the inspector does know, but I would right. like for the inspector to speak to those as concerns since okay. they are okay. safety concerns. Okay. Okay. The side steps right there, as you can see, are made out of uh, cinder blocks. Okay. And then the, the concrete um, driveway, there's a better picture that shows it. It's just um, right. cracked right there. The house is vacant, but I consider, you know, you could trip on that for sure. So. So when you say hazards, you're talking about trip hazards. Right, a trip hazard, basically. But nothing yeah. that's going to blow up. No, 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 right. no. Fair, fair or no, li I don't believe it's life safety. Them. I no. mean, it's a, how about the electric? That's um, hazardous. There was a permit for that. Hold mm -hmm. on, let me pull back up the notes. There was a, uh, a permit to inspect the electrical system. Mm -hmm. um, when the, inspe the building inspector went inside, they discovered that there was more work that was... Um, that the permit called for mm -hmm. um, and let's see the contractor ultimately administratively closed the permit per a phone call 
So it's just been sitting there uh, okay. since vacant. So, so at this time, your your inspection, based on your training and experience, didn't rise to the level of a uh, right. life safety type of. All right. No, it did not. Okay. Okay. All, right. All right. Does that satisfy your question, Mr. Harrington? I guess so. All right. Okay. So we need a a motion again. Uh, to find respondent noncompliance or respondent uh, compliance by the next cutoff date of 10-5 or be returned to the board for consideration or fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. Come motion, Ms. Marsek. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, all right. Case 37 is in compliance. Who is left here that has a case? All right, let, let's get let's get you out of here, and then we will, we'll just keep on going with the other cases. Uh, do you want to take a break to do that? All right, we'll take a break, and if you'll come up and give Miss uh, right the. Um, there you got one more, right? I've got two. Left. I have one as well. What? Okay. All right. We, all right. So let's, you want to? We're gonna take. Uh, you want to? Okay. All right. Forty. All right. Stop. What are? What is everyone's pleasure? What are we doing right yeah. now? Uh, Madam Chair, the, the, I, this inspector only had two cases left. Yes. If if we taking a break, I guess that's fine. We can do them after the break. Okay. But if we could just get her out, that would be beneficial to the citizens of the... Okay, we could probably do the <laughs> Zoom call one, two, and then take a break. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, Ms. Kirk, let's... Oh, okay. <laughs> let's go. Okay. All right. Case 38, CEB 09. So we'll take a break in a few minutes, and then you all will be next, okay? We'll just get uh, rid of these first. Case 38, CEB 09-22-216, Principal Eagle Capital. Anybody here? Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Kirk. Okay. On March 31st of 2022, I opened a field-generated case uh, for a damaged side staircase. Um, new handrails were installed without a permit. I re-inspected the property uh, yesterday, September 7th. Uh, there's still no permit on file. I have had contact with the owner. Staff's requesting an order of non-compliance with compliance by the next cutoff. Okay. Gerald, entertain a motion to find respondent non-compliance or respondent committed to compliance by the next cutoff date, October 5th, and be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? Uh -huh. Motion, Ms. Roby, second? Second. Second, Ms. Marsh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries. All right, uh, case 39 is in compliance, case 40, this will be your last case, yes, all right? CEB 09-22-218, Roger and Lee Green. Hey, Roger and Lee Green no longer own the home, I own it. Um, I filed a... Before you get that far, you may want to let us... Yeah, let's well, state your name and address for the record and be sworn in, please. Mary Frances Bakley, 708 Verdell Street, Daytona Beach, Florida. Spell the last name, please. B-A-K-L-E-Y. Bakley. That was Mary Frances? Yes, that's one name. These tell me, swear, or affirm that the testimony about the provider is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. All right, uh, and you are the new you, the new owner. Yeah, I find a quick, I filed a quick claim deed on um, uh, twenty. It was filed at the courthouse on. 24th of February, 2022. So do we need to add this person or can we go ahead with this? What, what, what do we do here? Now, give me a moment because this is the first time up. So let's, we, we got a couple of options. Here. Okay, hold on. And I have not met you yet, so. Nope. Sarah, that's me. Get a card my card, me so you can yeah. stay in touch with okay. her. 
I work for the county for the school, so I work like 7.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon, so. Well, there's, look, I mean. I took more pictures this morning. All right, so. Yeah. What do we want to do? Yeah, our, our preference on this is we'll, we'll go ahead and pull it and, re and uh, if, if, if necessary to recite, we'll, we'll cite it. Yeah. Subject. I, I have to go back. Uh, there, so our information, at least from the tax appraisers site, okay. does had a. It's still not updated on the. It's that's not so recognized yeah. yet. All right, so what we're not going to hear the case today. What, what are we going to do? You want to dismiss it? What do you want us to do? Oh. Um, hold, hold on. This can I copy? Right, exactly, but she said in February, did, did she provide anything that shows? I can that show you the quick deed paperwork. You know, if it was recorded then, which is, I think is what she's representing, one testimony. All we do is just bring it back. Either way, we'd be given her 30 days, so we okay. can give I mean, her 30 I have, days by reciting it or give her 30 days by... Continuing. I don't know why it's not on record yet. They've got a little page... All right. They had her name and Irregardless, all the issues is, will be right. resolved. Right. Because there's nothing. All you have to do is clean it up, correct? Okay. What? Uh, what, what did you say? That she's here. We can enter, enter her name. We what have her name, Mary Frances Bailey. Yeah, we're, we're going to and, and withdraw it. We're going to withdraw the case withdraw. right now. Withdraw it. And uh, hopefully she'll get it taken care of and we won't need to come back. Okay. Uh, but we'll, but we'll you'll support. have to tell Ms. Kirk. We, we have an open in-house case, so you need to be resolving that with the... Okay. Right. All right. Well, we need to make a motion to withdraw the case. Uh, oh, yeah, the city's yeah, we withdrawing, withdrawing it. it. We don't need to do it. Okay. Yeah. Case is withdrawn right now, but just get that done I'll, so, you know, when you get it friend. done, call her and tell her, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And that's primarily due to the nature of the violation. Right. 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 Okay. Madam Chair, if I may, yeah, um, the case you asked that were still here that are present... Uh -huh. It's 41, 48, I'm sorry, I went backwards here, 41, 42, 43, 45 is Zoom, and 48. Those are the only ones that are present. All right, so we have 41, 42, 43, 43, 45 is Zoom, 45, and 48. And 48. All right, we'll hear those cases next. Do, does the board, would everybody like a five-minute break, or you want to just go through this? I just go through with the man, but okay. Everybody willing to just go through? Okay, no break. All right, so we're going to start with case 41, CEB 09 22 198, Ridgely and Donna Stewart. Oh. Uh, this is Mr. Stanson. I'm good. You got one. I'm good. Thank you. Good morning. Please state your name and address for the record and be sworn in. <coughs> Donna, Donna Stewart. Okay. 250 yep. Pelican Avenue. John Ridgely, Ridgely Stewart, also 250 Pelican Avenue. Okay. Can you raise, both raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Stenson. Uh, good morning, John Stinson, code inspector with the city. My qualifications are on file. This is a field generated case uh, for dilapidated retaining wall. Uh, the first notice was received on 13 May of this year. Uh, <clears throat> I have been in contact with this property owner on multiple occasions. Uh, the last one was, uh, I believe, yesterday, wasn't it? Last uh, communication was yesterday. Uh, there is currently a permit that is under review for the repair of this wall. Uh, multiple inspections, last one being of yesterday. So he's <clears throat> recommending that this property be found in non-compliance and be brought in compliance by the next head off. Okay, is there anything you'd like to tell us? It's not done yet. We're just here to rule on whether it's done or not done. Right. You have the, you're well, getting we, the permit? Yes, we're under contract. Okay, okay. It's not the way I wanted to fix it. I wanted to fix it landscaped and take out my wall but that was going to take a lot longer okay for engineering okay so i've signed a contract okay he's permitting but he does have in his contract that he has two months to complete it 
So I would like to go to November if I can. Now, he's planning on starting next week, but, you know, his contract says he has too much to to the final completion. I mean, I'd rather not come here and stand I, I get. in a month. I hear what you're saying. What What do you think about that, Mr. Stinson? That's I don't have a problem with uh, the November cutoff. Because they're getting the permit. They're doing what they need <coughs> to do. What's the board think about that? Um, All right. The chair will entertain motion to find respondent noncompliance or respondent to come into compliance by November 2nd or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 a day. Such a motion. So moved by Ms. Roby, uh, second. Second by Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Case 42. Hey, we'll, we'll be in touch. Okay. Yeah, stay in touch. Always important. Case 42, CEB 09 22 221. Andrew Schreiber and Cheryl Cola. How you doing? Good morning. Please state your name and address for the record. Andrew Schreiber, 307 Manhattan Avenue, Daytona Beach, 32118. You're Andrew? Yes. Okay. Please be sworn in. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. We'll hear from Mr. Stenson. Uh, yes. This is a field-generated case uh, for a damaged roof. Uh, first notice was received on 10 June of 22. Uh, I have been in contact with this property owner. Uh, compliance was due on 18 July of 22. Uh, multiple reinspections, the last one being yesterday. Uh, recommendations of non-compliance and compliance by the next cutoff. Anything been done? Uh, no. no. Uh, at the moment, I am unable to do anything like that, ma'am. I can't get financing right now. You can't what? I'm tapped out with financing. I have surgery scheduled on the 22nd for this hand. I have macular degeneration. I've been going for shots for that. And dental work, I've got implants started, and all that's on credit cards. I should have that paid off, all of them, within about six months. At that point, I should be able to get credit again unless the town can extend some. I called. Mrs. Stetson had given me a phone number with the town. I called. I never got a phone call back. So... I'm at, so you're asking for city assistance, basically. Uh, assistance, or even just a loan at a reasonable rate, and I'll pay it back out within 18 months. I had one estimate for the roof up there, and the guy is just a joke. $12,000 for a rubber roof, six-month warranty on labor, 10 months on parts. Uh, rubber roof in this weather? I would not do that. <laughs> well, that doesn't... I... No, but that's, and he dropped the price from 14 to 12 uh, right. If I put this a rubber is, uh, roof up there, I'm screwed. So. All right. What about the parking in the yard? That's is that taken right. care of? Okay. Yeah. But even that is a slight issue for me. We bought the house six years ago, seven years ago now. Well, it's taken care of, so just don't, don't open it up again. It's going to come up again. D don't, don't do it again. Don't open it up again. Uh, <laughs> Any comments from the board? I'd just like to put it up for six months. I yeah, will get I know the roof done. I'd like to do, but I don't. What? The roof is covered, so no further damage can be done right now. It's been covered for months. At this stage, we're just looking for a finding of compliance and noncompliance. Right. All we're doing is looking for compliance and not compliance. It's not in compliance. If there's somebody in the city you can contact, Mr. Stenson would probably have a name to tell you. Is that correct? Or give me a number one, sir, to call about the aid. I'll give you another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So all we're here today is to say this has not been fixed. That's it. We can see that. I get time. I'm not fighting the roof. I know I have but to replace that. We don't go out six months on any... Uh, no. Before that, I'm not going to be able to get credit. Well, and just for the record, even though we've not, uh, we've acknowledged. But we listen to your case, and we, you know, so we'll listen right, next no. time you're here. So, okay. Yeah, there was an acknowledgement that the parking in the yard is 
is not it is now in compliance, but at right. the time it wasn't it right. was non-compliance. So we right. want to make sure that that's part of that it doesn't separate from the order to, because we do want to have a finding of non-compliance for the parking in the yard uh, because it, we don't want it to continue. Just as part See, of your that's order. That's why we didn't need to bring it up. But okay. Again. What? So, oh, just a, uh, a yeah, I know. Compliance I know. That's as part of the whole case and with clarity. All right. So here's what we're going to do. The chair will entertain a motion to find respondent in noncompliance or a respondent to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, which is 10 5 2022, and further find the respondent previous in noncompliance been currently in compliance. And for any future violation, we return to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to, could be $5,000 per occurrence in case be dismissed? No. Well, no. That's, that's unclear because of the separation. Uh, I don't know how. All right, well, tell me how you want it done. You want, just, I mean. Just a normal, normal no, no, order. It's, normal. it's really a normal order. I just wanted to make sure it was clear on the record that it's disorders including the uh, parking, but it would be a normal order. Okay, so we're just finding the respondent noncompliance and, and ordering the respondent to come into compliance by the next cutoff date. Right, and the clarity okay. is just that is, is as to both issues that are on the agenda, which is the parking and the yard as well so as we the have roof. It's always as to all issues. Yeah. That's always with all issues, right? Yeah, so okay. The discussion kind of made it. Okay, I get it. Yeah. I get it. All right. Um, all right, is there such a motion? So moved. Motion, Ms. Himes, second? Second. Second, Ms. Marshall, in favor, say aye. aye. Like, sign, opposed. All right, just stay in contact, get the number, do what you can do, and then you'll come back and tell us what's going on next. Uh, for, did you set a date for 10 5? Yeah. I have surgery at 9 22. Well, I'm going to be out of commission. Cut, tell him what's going on because right, he can come up here. On that too. When he comes up here, he can tell us what's going on. Okay. All Mr. Right. Stenson will tell us what you have told him. Okay. All right. All right. I'll show you the in a minute. Okay. On the surgery. Thank you. All right. Case number 43, CB09 22 222. Robert Van Horn and Melanie Van Horn. Good morning. How are you? Um, Melanie Van Horn, 308 Manhattan Avenue, Daytona Beach, 32118. Can you speak up just a little bit louder? And you can pull your microphone yeah, down to you. To, yeah. <laughs> just oh, that's heavier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Melanie Rose Van Horn, 308 Manhattan Avenue. Daytona Beach, 32118. Okay, will you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Stenson. Yes, this was a rule of six case uh, for damaged roof. The first notice was received on 10 June of 22. Uh, the permits have been applied for and are under review. Uh, the compliance date is or was 11 July 22. Uh, last inspection of the property was yesterday. Uh, property remains in non-compliance. We're asking for compliance by the next cutoff. Okay, so you've done what you needed to do. You've got your permits. We're just here because it's not done yet. So we're right. here to say compliance or non-compliance. Anything to add? Um, we got our permit on the second okay. and we're gonna start work thank right you away. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, ma'am. All right, so Chair will entertain motion to find respondent noncompliance or respondent committed compliance by the next cutoff date, which is 10 5 2022, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? Um, motion, okay. Ms. Roby, second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. aye. Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. See ya. Thank you, Bye. <laughs> thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Okay. Have a day. You too. <laughs> <laughs> Case 44, CEB, oh, wait a minute. So we're going to do the Zoom call. We're going to skip that, and we're going to do the Zoom call. You only okay. have this one left. Oh, you only have this one left? <laughs> okay, we'll do it. Case 44, CEB 09-22-223, Elena Scott. Go. Yeah, no, sure. no okay. show. No show. Okay. 
Okay. This is a rule of six case uh, for unpermitted exterior wall, uh, overgrown uh, landscaping, and lack of address numbers. Uh, first notice was received on 16 June of 22. The property was posted. I have been in contact with this property owner. Uh, compliance is, was due by 8 July 22. Multiple reinspections, the last inspection being on 8 29. Property remains in non-compliance, asking for compliance by the next cutoff. Have they done anything? No. No. Does anybody live there? Not anymore. Um, okay. She was trying to, it, she wanted to rent the property, and then she made some repairs without the permit. No. Um, okay. So it, she's it, not there anymore? Maybe. No. No, okay. she's not there. Okay. All right. Chair Ollington, motion for respondent to non-compliance or respond to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, N5-2022, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. Amen. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. All right, now we'll do, that's it? <laughs> Good day. <laughs> All right, case 45, CEB 09-22-199, Gary uh, Weimer. And Gay. Gay Weimer. Oh, I'm sorry, Gay Weimer. Well, they're two. Okay. I Gay Gay Weimer. Okay, sorry. State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Robert Weimer, 5730 Tree Line Drive, Columbus, Indiana, and and uh, husband of Gay M. Weimer, who uh, whose trust owns the house at 345. Euclid Avenue, Daytona Beach. Will you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. All right, so Gay is your wife? Correct. And I assume you have... Uh, I, am a I am a trustee. You are also a trustee. Okay. Right. That's fine. All right. We'll hear from Mr. Yates, and then we'll let you say what you'd like to tell us, okay? Okay. Go ahead. Inspector Kevin Yates, uh, code compliance. My credentials are on file. Uh, this case was opened March 9, 2022, and was field generated. The notice of violation was issued for an unpermitted sidewalk installation. Uh, they were first notified April 20th, 2022, and compliance was due by May 20th, 2022. Um, I've had contact with the owner, but the issue remains. I'd like to ask for a finding of non-compliance with compliance due by the next cutoff, um, and no permits have been pulled as of today. Show me where this... Right right there on the left side of the home there. You can see it's brand new being installed. Okay. Oh, I see. That is what needed a permit? Yes. Okay. Uh and he can go get a permit from the city. Absolutely. As trustee. Yes. Uh, I believe. I believe so. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. What would you like to tell us? Anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Information with you. Sure. Oh, you've disabled the screen. Okay. No. No. So. Oh. Yeah. yeah so I was going to share. Uh, uh, some written remarks I have prepared, but it's disabled. So let me read them. Okay. So the, um, so uh, the, I prepared a timeline. So on February the 16th, which are some of the photos that um, the inspector showed, uh, we, we did an update to a sidewalk that had been present for as long as, either my wife or I knew, okay? And we did not know it needed a permit. So uh, you see a photograph of the, of the sidewalk that was showed. Mm -hmm. We departed Daytona Beach April 6, as we are residents of Indiana and winter in Florida and also periodically come down on vacation. Approximately April the 21st, our neighbor from across the street called and reported an envelope taped to the exterior of the storm door. They called back and reported it was addressed to someone in Lake Worth, Florida, which turned out to be our neighbor next door at 34, 
one Euclid and move the envelope to the mailbox of 341. And in the information I prepared, which I have sent to uh, I for the person who swore me in. Okay, I forget her name. Um, so it shows a picture of the of a non of, of a violation. We first learned of an issue with our walkway uh, on via a registered letter that was posted on August the 18th and we received in Columbus, Indiana on August the 23rd. We have since spoken with Inspector Kevin Yates. He indicated that we needed to apply for a building permit which required a survey. We have made an arrangement with JJ Matjeka and Associates to survey the property at 345 Euclid. The physical survey was completed on September 1st. We're now awaiting the results. To our knowledge, the property has not been surveyed since construction in the mid fifties. Only one family, my wife's family, has owned the property since the house was built. And 341 Euclid has been transferred numerous times since 345 Euclid had been built and no discrepancies had ever been noted by any owner. And I've included in the information I sent a uh, Google Earth picture, which clearly shows the original sidewalk, which is, an ad is adjacent to 341's original sidewalk, which is red brick. And uh, that is this, the sidewalk on our side of the property that we, we replaced. The survey results will be completed and likely will not contain an issue as the original sidewalk was adjacent to the 341 sidewalk. We will apply for a permit. We've understood from the permits office that it requires an in-person application, but it is highly unlikely we'll be back before January. Right? There is an outside chance that we could be there within the month, but that depends upon the weather in the Caribbean. We're asking to be allowed to apply for the permit and complete the process when we return in January of 2023, barring any discrepancies in the survey. If the survey shows us something is wrong, we will remedy it. We are sorry okay. for this issue. We are not familiar with Daytona Beach regulations as in Indiana, we're not required to make an application for similar kind of work. Okay. I get that. I, um, so does he in fact have to come here to get a permit? Is uh, that true? No, 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 no. I mean, now there may be some documents that he needs to produce, but generally my understanding is that you can apply for a permit and get all that online. So I was told by the permit office that it, since it is a permit after the fact, I have to apply apply in person okay and that's that's possible but the, the real yeah that's possible uh, where we are at this point though is really just determining whether it's a non-compliance the issues that um and i understand that the concern about the possibility of delay um but i guess the first issue is whether it can it can remain and and um and He'll get, need to get a permit pulled, but he'll know that once he gets a survey. So he's really on the step one of uh, obtaining the survey, okay. knowing whether he's encroaching or whether there's any other reason okay. why it's a problem. So, all right, so let's just take step it this one step right yes. now, uh, which is you get the, the survey and you'll figure out then that might change the permit situation. Okay. Yes, so I would suggest this. If I get the permit the uh, survey results, I get with Inspector Yates, show him those ins those, those uh, um, results. And if I'm, in, if I'm in not encroaching on anyone's property or violating any rules, we move along. Yeah, all right. So we're going to uh, give you more time to get that survey in by just finding you in noncompliance. Uh, and then we'll see what's going on at the next meeting, okay? And you stay in touch with Mr. Yates. We don't have I'll control stay. over any of the other departments. 
<laughs> this is not something that we have control over. Um, so you'll have to work out with them what you need to do. The, okay, um, so let me ask you a hypothetical. Hypothetical is, mm -hmm. is that there is a hurricane. We don't come down in October. Therefore, I can't apply and and you could find me in noncompliance. Even I will have a. We're going to find you a noncompliance at any rate today because it's not in compliance today. That's where we just have the facts presented to us. We don't have okay. discretion as to whether we, you know, uh, and we can't. So, so we, what you have heard today is. Uh, but we're not uh, finding you today. I'm going to find you with hurricane. What? Excuse me? I'm not going to find the next month if he has a hurricane. He can get down here. Right. You can't, I mean, don't worry about I, a hurricane. I, you know, we, we all deal with that when the time comes. We don't deal with it ahead of time okay. other than to be prepared. Uh, and he, he may, if I may, Madam Chair, um, he could, may want to clarify in terms of the in-person versus, I mean, it may simply mean just getting a contractor to do it in, instead of him physically coming here. So just some, get some good clarification from the permits division. That's something we don't control. Uh, whatever they're telling you is, is the answer, but make sure that they clearly understand the question. Uh, you may not physically have to be here if you have a contractor to handle that for you. And I don't have a contractor. That's what would well, it's, it's, so I did this on my own, okay? No, no sir. Uh, just to, just to clarify, to right, I met the go. contractor on site, so that work was done by a contractor. I also spoke with the owner of the house on February, or a, a woman who claimed to be, and explained to her that she would need a permit. So, so they, they, they've been aware. Okay. Okay. All right. You make a motion. Make... All right. So, uh, Chair Owen J, motion Second. to find the respondent noncompliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, which is 10 5, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Ms. Himes is making a motion. Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. All right. So uh, just do do what you need to do uh, and, so, and get it taken care of. And well, stay in touch yes. with Mr. Yates. We, we have no control over what any of the other board not boards but like permit uh, departments do we don't have i mean all all we're doing is we look at the picture listen to the testimony and it's not in compliance that's all we can rule on right now that's it and that's what we've done okay so okay thank, thank you all right uh so we have one more case of the person that's here is that yeah case 48 is that person here? This is case CEB 0922-225, Giuseppe Pagliarello. Victoria Agust... By the way, if you want to, you have to come up here. Are you an owner? Oh, that's Mr. Wood's name. Okay, so if you don't want to say anything, I mean, that's... You have the information you need from the contractor? Okay, all right. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I won't okay. dispute those. Mr. Roney, did you want to come up or no? He said no. Okay. Yeah, he knows this process. He's been here okay. many times all right. before. Good. All right. State your name and address for the record. Be An sworn in, please. Anthony Maroney, uh, 719 Derbyshire Road, Daytona Beach. Let's hear something to share with the interested. Can you spell Maroney for me, please? M O R R O N E. M O R, I'm sorry. R O N E, yeah. Can you repeat that again, please? Yes. M O R R O N E. Thank you. You're welcome. Will you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Yates. Read the case of the record. All right, this is case 48, CB 09-22-225. I think I did with the names. 
Giuseppe Pagliarello and Vittoria Agostini. Okay. All right. This case was opened March 10th, 2022 and was a citizen's complaint. The notice of violation was issued for peeling paint, dilapidated roof, vegetation on sidewalks, dilapidated garage, and dirt and grime. Uh, they were first notified April 4th, 2022, and compliance was due May 14th, 2022. Um, in the last week, uh, the entire home has been painted, as you can see, and the uh, landscaping and the vegetation has been cleaned up. Okay. Uh, we'd like to ask for a finding of non-compliance with compliance due by the next cutoff to allow them to finish the work. So the only thing left to do is really the roof? And the garage. And as you can see, you have some okay. soffit hanging down there and, and some other issues. Okay, so you just need to get the permits for those things, correct? They may not even need a permit if they're just doing repairs. Okay, oh. all right. Okay, uh, is that? Yes. Okay with you, all right, Chair Owen. I know Mr. Yates knows it. <laughs> huh? I didn't have to be here because I know he knows. Yeah, things. okay. The chair will entertain a motion to find respondent non-compliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, 10-5-2022, or be returned to the board for consideration or fine up to $1,000 a day. Such a motion? Motion, Ms. Heim, second. Second. Was that Ms. Roby? Ms. March. Uh, Ms. March. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, opposed. Thank you. Thank All you. right, Kevin, Thank let's... You. Thank you. And you'll get them on that, Ms. Maroney? Yes. Oh, okay, very good. Cool. Okay. All right, so should we go? Wait a minute. Okay, how many cases? Five left. Five left. Wait a minute. Do we need to go back to what? Anything? 46. 46. Have a page. Or, oh, that's it? So that's where we are? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So they're all yours, Kevin, right? All me. Okay. <laughs> Case 46. CEB 0922-202, Louise Scamlin. Okay. This case was opened February 4th, 2022, and was part of a rule of six. The notice of violation was issued for junk vehicle, peeling paint, dilapidated deck, and dilapidated roof. Uh, they were first notified February 25th, 2022, and compliance was due March 27th, 2022. Um, I've had contact with the owner in the last week. Uh, and he started working immediately. Uh, the vehicle's been removed, and um, some painting has started. So I'd like to ask for a finding of noncompliance with compliance due by the next cutoff, so we can finish up. Okay. Comments? Chair Wellington, motion to find respondent noncompliance, so respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to a thousand dollars per day. The next cutoff date is ten five. That's a motion. Motion, Ms. Roby, second, Ms. Himes, all in favor say aye. aye. Like, sign, oppose. Case 47, CEB 09-22-200, Marilyn Fields and John Dunbar. This case was opened February 13, 2020, and was field generated. The notice of violation was issued for unmaintained landscaping, outside storage, wood rot, dirt, grime, dilapidated roof, damaged fascia, dilapidated fencing, and uh, peeling and faded paint. Uh, they were first notified June 4, 2020, and compliance was due July 4, 2020. Um, I've had no contact with the owner, and the issues remain. I'd like to ask for a finding of noncompliance with compliance due by the next cutoff. Is it vacant, Kevin? I see that door. Yes, it absolutely. It's vacant, and this has been a case since 2020? Yeah, there was an it's like two years. Yeah, there was a, an error uh, with the inspection software, so it, it wasn't popping up. But there's been no change. Uh, so. Okay. Any comments? Oh, well, Chair Owen, motion fine respond to non-compliance or respond to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, 10-5-2022, twenty-two, be returned to the board for consideration for fine up to a thousand dollars a day. So motion. So moved. Motion, Ms. Roby, second. Second, Ms. Himes, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, opposed, motion carries. Case number 49, CEB 09-22-226, Vanna Sherrice. Sherrice, I don't know, Sherris. This case was opened January 31st, 2022. And uh, came from the police department. The notice of violation was issued for unsafe building, exterior services, structural members, foundation walls, missing roof, broken windows, dilapidated building, damaged doors, and fire damage. 
They were first notified March 2nd, 2022, and compliance was due by April 1st, 2022. I've had contact with the owner, but the issues remain. I'd like to ask for a finding of non-compliance with compliance due by the next cutoff. You have had contact? Yes. But nothing's changed? Nothing's changed and, and not um, in the last couple months have I had contact. Just another one of those insurance type things? Yeah. All right, so this... This is fire damage? Yeah, the house burned down last January. I remember that. And then just yeah. nothing's been done, unfortunately, and, and they haven't really been contacting me, so. Okay. Is that coquina, or what is that stuff? Yeah. I think it's actually a form of stamped concrete, oh, believe it or not. Okay. Oh. Very interesting. Yeah. It, it is. It was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So the chair will entertain motion to find respondent non-compliance or respondent to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, 10-5-2022, be returned to the board for consideration or fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? Um, motion, Ms. Himes. Second, Ms. Marsh. All in favor say aye. 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 Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Two more. Case number 50, CEB 09-22-227, Don Overstreet. This case was opened April 14, 2022, and was part of a rule of six. Uh, the notice of violation was issued for a dilapidated wall. Uh, they were first notified April 22, 2022, and compliance was due by May 22, 2022. Um, I've had contact with the owner, but the issue remains. I'd like to ask for a finding of noncompliance with compliance due by the next cutoff. Any comment? All right, Chair Rowland Chain, motion to find respondent noncompliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date 10 5 22 or be returned to the board for consideration or fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. Come on. Motion, Ms. Roby, second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, opposed. Case number 51, CEB 09 22 228, Beth Lemke. Uh, this case is in compliance as of September 6, 2022. Well, how lovely. Anything else? Okay. Meeting adjourned. Just want to let you know I provided you with a case at a